and welcome to Nat One. We are picking up from Philopsy's house, um, and yeah, last session uh, was a bit of a bit of a tough one, bit of a you know sombre one, as uh, the party had picked up from uh, a fight with a lot of red caps who'd snuck into Philopsy's house um, in the night and uh, started you know causing some trouble. As they dispatched of them quite quickly, went outside to see that uh, poor Jack Lop had been murdered in the street by the Redcaps. Um, so, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah, they made sort of uh, like they went around sort of sorting things out. Uh, Arch keeping watch up in a tree. Um, Holland going around repairing the destruction that they had caused to Mint Muse, the little uh, cottage style town of Herringon uh, where the Lapoos family live, uh, that's Flopsy's family. Um, on returning back to the house obviously, um, all the you know kids didn't really know about it except Bopsy and uh, Topsy didn't know that his friend had died and his, they, got, they got the news broken to him. Yeah, he went off and he had his own little quiet moment. Everyone were having dinner. They had a little pleasant conversation about sugar and salt. And um, then, uh, yeah, Topsy came back with a harrowing look on his face. Um, it's quite certainly clear that uh, if the red caps are getting down here, um, that the protection and barriers and things that have been put in place perhaps might not be there anymore. Um, so that's a bit alarming for you, Archie, because you might think something may have happened to Will. Uh, that's mm. Will of the Fairwild, uh, who usually stops them from getting this far down, as well as trying to conduct his own um, sort of shenanig shenanigans as well. Um, but yeah, so it, we last left off at the table with Mopsy, which is Flopsy's mum, holding Topsy uh, to try and reassure him that things will be okay. Um, and I do believe you were cooking up a plan as to how to protect this quaint little village from further red cap attacks. Um, we can actually pick up wherever you want. If you want to do a little bit of a time skip, we can. Um, or if you want to just pick up from the table, uh, being sat at the, the breakfast table with all the porridge and the sugar and the salt, we can do that too. I think we should do it at the table. Alright. Because we're still sort of discussing what we can do to help. Okay. Alright. So, the kids, were, the kids were all in the kitchen washing up the, the pots. Um, and sort of, as they come back in, we're sort of drying their hands on the tea towels and everything, uh, Mopsy sort of just like lets go of, of Topsy, just sort of like pats his head and just looks like she's just preening his clothes and you know she's not actually she she don't want to show that she's trying to cheer him up but he still looks a bit sad and quiet Alright The kids sort of like shrug and get on with playing with whatever the, the, the dolls that they were playing with I'm I'm not a fighter myself. Archie saying about arming the town and preparing you for battle that I know I could never do that and I can see why I could never do that now after seeing all of you and who I am it just doesn't make sense. Um but I've I've made it this far. There, it, it doesn't mean that there, there's no hope when, when bad things are coming. Not to say that they are necessarily coming, but you see, there, there must be other ways. Um, ever since joining the carnival, I've been quite <laughs> fanciful with magic. Uh, Dad, do you know if anyone in the town? Is, is quite skilled in that way. He just sort of looks at you with this, like, you know, tilt to his head, and he just shakes it, and uh, he just says, um, well, um, apart from just sort of decorative things and flavourful things, and 
Are there such, you know, um, not really um, illusory things? Sure, but uh, well, nothing. Well, that mm. that's the most important, isn't it? Um, you see, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be scared. Um, we've not said much in front of Bobsy, Mopsy, and Topsy, and. The other one that I forgot to mention. Um, Hopsy. <laughs> Hopsy, pretend in canon that I did. Mm. Um, there is a lot to be said for not letting people worry. Because in the end, that, that doesn't achieve anything. It, it, it just makes people scared, and they're not going to act better from that. I say you use all of the magic that you can to keep the spirit alive. Mm. And as for... as for fighting back... I'm gonna look at Archie and Holland as like the two that I have to help me do that. And kind of look around <laughs> the room at how homely it is and anti-violence it is. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose that's best left to the more professionals. You know, it's it's funny you should say magic, Flopsy. I, I hadn't thought about it until you said that, but I do think, based on where Mint News is, no, I've not been around here so much, but I do think nearby there's, like, this guy. He's a bit weird. My hair. Uh, I think I mentioned it before, but he makes magic things. I, I don't know, maybe we could see if he can make something. Yeah, you remember he's called Nib, N I B. I think he's called Nib, or, or like Nick, or something like that. That does sound very good. What, what kind of magical things does he make? Could they s save the town? Um, well, I, I suppose so. Hopefully. Um, uh, he just makes loads of things, to be honest. He makes all sorts of gizmos and, and, um, and doohickeys and, and stuff. I, I think, well, I, I think that, um, hopefully whatever we get from him, um, will be useful. He kind of fumbles around in his pockets, just antsy fingers from anxieties. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> I suppose <clears throat> Sorry. anything we can get around now would be mighty helpful, even if it's only small. Um, I know we've we've come across a fair few things along the way that. Even if they only help a small amount, you know, um, we could always do with a little bit more hope. Exactly. I mean, it's better than nothing. Yes. Well, anything is better than nothing, that's, that's for sure. Um... He's sort of trying to keep his voice hushed because the kids are sort of playing. And uh, you can see that uh, anyone who's looking would see that Bopsy's ear is turned towards the conversation the whole time because he knows to listen. And the other two girls are just sort of chilling and playing with the little toys. Um, Bopsy's pretending to play with them as though he's, like, making them distracted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Flopsy, uh, his hand is still fumbling in his pocket. And then the rustling in his pocket just stops and his eyes kind of widen a little bit. And he just kind of blinks a couple of times and then like sidles on over to his dad and kneels in a bit closer. Hmm. Um, dad, I, I feel I may have been a little bit silly. Um, You see, we've been getting little bits along the way and well, this isn't a a, a fix-all to the problem, but 
I, I never had a chance to use this. Uh, I'm just going to pull out the cabin key that I've had for like seven sessions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, okay. Um, he looks at the key and he looks up at you and he he says, "I, I is oh, this for? Um, do you do you have a home somewhere?" Oh, I, 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 I do. I. I feel like I have two of those now, um, but this this key isn't for any home. Um, I, I want you to have it because I feel like, well, you you will be the best one for it. Um, if anything troublesome were to start happening, all you need to do is, um, I, know, I believe this was the instruction. Uh, imagine a lock, and just put, put the key in and when you turn it you'll be able to walk inside to a, a a little cabin and you can let whoever you want in and you can keep whoever you want out this was given to me by a, a friend in hither yes so I'm scrolling up to see where we are now, so I don't get it wrong. It was given to me by a friend in Hither, and, well, I haven't needed to use it yet, so I think it's much, much more useful in your hands. He... And... Yep. Oh, if... I, I, I don't remember my friend Jingle Jangle telling me how many people could fit inside this cabin, but... If you were to open it in the middle of the town, I bet you could be the hope that Mint Muse would need at that time. He looks down at it and he looks confused. Um, and he says, So if I were to, if I don't know the size of it, would, if I was to imagine a, a lock in front of me now and to open it, would I create a a house that might destroy anything in its pathway or or what I, how does this work i don't want to cause any destruction myself well i'm i have to admit i'm i'm quite good with some spells but this key is a little bit beyond me um i, d I don't think it would destroy anything um your best bet might be to to try and do it outside, but don't be scared. If, if if anything were to happen very close to home, I trust that you would just make sure that everybody is safe. And what if someone wanted to visit? Would they be able to knock on the door? Um, would the I maybe we should take this outside and test it. Um, I'd like you all to come with me if that's okay. I'd, I'd rather be safe than go out there and make a mistake by myself, you know. And he looks really worried that like he's gonna be entrusted with this responsibility. Um, <clears throat> he's almost like holding it out towards you, like he's like a sort of frail in his action of like mm. holding it, holding the key in his fingertips. Um. Mopsy sort of puts a hand on his shoulder and uh, says, "I'll stay here with with uh, with the kids." Um, Bops, you can see Bopsy's literally like sighed a little bit as though to be like, "He wants to come too." Um, like he's gonna miss out on seeing something that could be something that he could also share responsibility for. Like he looks restless in this like that I want to do something vibe. Um. And she sort of like oh, goes uh, off to it. Yeah, go on. Did he? He left his bowler hat in his room, didn't he? Uh, yes. He's not wearing it. Mm. As we're walking out of the, I'm not sure if we're walking out right now. I want to go to the room and get the bowler hat, if that's okay. While Bopsy's talking with Mopsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mopsy just comes down to the girls, sort of like crouches down, and she like fleets her like apron as she lowers her down, <clears throat> down, 
to sit with them. Um, and she's just like saying shit like, you know, like, oh, um, what does this one do? And oh, look at him. Isn't he dressed nicely? Uh, the toys and things. Um, just trying to just get them engaged. But Bopsy sort of looks at you as you leave the room. Um, yeah. He's going to uh, actually uh... stand up um, a little and sort of stand near the table where Holland and Archie are and just stare at them while she's gone. Like, he's, he's looking at him. Uh, Topsy's sort of, like, gone to the hall, uh, the hall uh, where the front entrance way is, and he's, like, sort of putting his jacket on. Um, yeah, he's, he's just sort of looking at you, uh, Archie and Holland, right now. Um, Mopsy sort of... I don't know, she's trying to, like, get him involved, but he's not. He's, he's just mm -hmm. standing there. Uh, well, I'll I'll just be a second. I'm gonna go off and get the bowler hat, right. and come back unless anyone wants to see while I'm getting it. Uh, Bopsy leans right into Holland and goes, "You know what's going on, don't you?" Uh, sure we do. Can I come with you? Hmm. I don't know. It's up to your mom and dad. <laughs> Um, he turns to his mum and she's like look, playing with the girls but like looking over at him as if to be like come on sort of thing and uh, he looks back at you and um, leans in again and goes I know she's not going to let me can you tell her? I I don't think I can but I I promise it's not as bad as it seems Okay, he, he's sort of like, back, yeah. oh, you've come back? Oh, I was going to say, should I, should I come yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, you can come back. Yeah, you can come back. Um, while Bopsy's like leaning closer into Holland and asking, I want to like pop up behind him with the hat, just sit it on his head, mm. uh, and I want to use message to tell him, ask mum if you can come with us. Try and sell yourself as a grown-up now. Hmm. I'm yeah. going to phrase it specifically like sell yourself because I'm, I'm just going to try and manipulate the wording of the magenta bowler hat. Hmm. <laughs> Persuasion on bartering and selling. Mm -hmm. It's not really that, but hmm. okay. I want to just give him some confidence for it. He's going to turn around to his mum, straighten himself up, and um, he's going to go, Mummy, I've got a deal for you, and this deal is this. If I can go out with, with my younger brother, <laughs> well, well, he, well, my older brother for the time being, um, if I can go out with him, then I will do all of the jobs for the rest of the year and <laughs> she like looks up and then looks over like looks at flopsy with a look of slight concern um <laughs> he says exactly as i said it um but with that advantage um she takes this sort of knowing look from flopsy like this has been influenced by flopsy um she looks at she looks at him and she has an understanding that he knows, you know, like he's he, he knows he knows what's going on, um, and she nods at Flopsy, and then says to him, "Well, that's quite the bargain. Oh, I'll have to hold you to that one then." And uh, she winks at him, but at you, she gives you these stern eyes of like, make sure nothing happens to him. Um, you get an Flopsy nods back out. <laughs> you get an impression that she is seeing your adult form. And seeing you as an adult, unlike your father who sees you as a child still, she's seeing you as a responsible adult. Um, and she just returns to the girls as though nothing's happening because they're still knee-deep in some drama with the dolls that she she's trying to keep them safe from the knowledge. Um, he sort of like pulls his little jacket up and his little sort of like bowler hat comes down over his eyebrows a little bit and he like tilts it back to try and see. Um, because it's too big for him. And uh, <laughs> he's like, all right, 
I'm, I'm ready. And uh, Topsy just sort of pulls his head around the corner. He's like, oh, "Are we off then?" But well, I'm I'm ready to go. Yes, is is everybody else ready? Are your friends well, coming? Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Whew. He is like holding the key in his hand, like as though it's leading the way, um, up the up the passageway, up to, through the hall, through the uh, front of the, the the cottage door, um, out into the sort of very warm, thick air. Um, it's very summer. This there's, there's a sort of summer heat uh, beating down into the town. Everything's very golden, uh, sort of thing, and. Uh, he leads you around the back of the house, and as soon as you sort of step onto the grass, you feel it's very lush and soft and quite moist, um, as it sort of like crests up upwards, um, as though to accommodate the like Teletubby Hill nature of this uh, Warren. Um, and he walks you up this hill. The sun sort of like peeping over the the uh, surrounding forest through the th- casting shafts of light down through these um, branches and leaves. Um, as he gets to like the sort of crest of this hill, again, like I said before, there are quite a uh, there's quite a an, an amount of field before it gets to the edge of the forest line. Uh, again, to accommodate the fact that there are these warrens underneath where all the houses are that extend outwards, not just down, but like down and forwards, you know. Um, and he's standing on this very bare hill. Um, there's it's very very fresh. Uh, there is a little breeze. Um, and you all stand there, sort of in a line, <laughs> um, and he's holding the key in his hand, um, and he says, so if I just, um, well, what, do I just look at the, the air in front of me and pretend there's a, there's a lock? Um, I, I, I believe so, um, just try to slot the key into a lock and turn it and... Well, who knows what you'll unlock. Um, okay. I'm, I'm quite excited myself to see it. I will I will do that now then. Um, and he is very um, uh, sort of tentative in the way that he closes his eyes to sort of try and imagine a lock and then he opens them really wide um, and uh, really concentrates when he puts his hand into this little lock. And he opens it, he like twists it as though it's hit something. And in front of you forms a rather large double door shimmering sort of like iridescent um like balloon no sorry, bubble esque like like Archie's tears. Uh like wobbling sort of um shimmer in the atmosphere, sort of like in the air itself, like a door shaped almost like a translucent jelly that wiggles a little bit. Um, it's sort of it's sort of like uh, the surface of water as it moves. And the click makes a very sounding click, like a very solid click. Um, it's not just a five foot wide doorway, it's like a 10 foot wide doorway and it's like 20 foot tall. It's massive, it's much bigger than you expected. Um, it's not solid if you went to touch it, your hand would go straight through it. But as soon as he like pushes in with the key, this door opens, and as soon as it does, a crack appears in the atmosphere, as though you are looking into an extra-dimensional space. And as it opens wide, you see this vast marble floor, these these like golden-handled sort of staircase uh, in the centre, like a grand staircase that goes up and splits off into two separate wings, uh, like red velvet carpet coming down the stairs, uh, held in place by these sort of golden uh, brass uh, sort of like um, uh, carpet holders on the stairs as as they like tuck into the step itself uh, with like decorative opulent little um sort of carved uh like little lions and things like sort of all the way down the banisters um you look to your left you see an entire wing that's like an archway with a dining table fit for about a hundred people 
um, you, through that you can sort of see uh, th these huge arcing ceilings with like plaster, uh, like sort of carved with like angels and and like cherubs and stuff. And on the right, on the on, sorry, on the left hand side, you look down there and you see like a lot of like uh, nice settees all arranged with like buffets and things like that. Uh, bookcases, uh, you can see that extend down into the sort of right. Uh, sorry, the left back of the house, as though it's a library on one side. Um, and then beside the actual staircase in the middle itself, two more um, sort of corridors that lead down each side of it into further rooms in the house. Um, as soon as you step foot in there, everyone just looks up and around at this vaulted ceiling. It just goes on forever, it seems. Um, even the top bit, when when you get up the, the staircase, it's like a balcony that overlooks the actual centre of this uh, foyer itself. There are, like, statues of, like, like long-forgotten gods all just sort of lounging around as though this is the most... Um, it's like an almost like a Greek spa uh, in its decoration. Um... And it's extremely jarring to see this very, very rich, like, almost royal uh, mansion that you've just walked into. Bopsy's like, whoa! As he looks around, he immediately just like, holds onto his hat and just starts running off with his little uh, jacket like sort of fl flying behind him as he runs. And as he's like... Flopsy does the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As he's running up the stairs, you see uh, a floating um, sort of uh, like metal tray with like a cloister on top of it. Um, and as you as you look at it's floating down the stairs, you see again shimmering in the atmosphere the outline of what seems to be uh, a, an unseen servant that is visible somewhat, as if it's only mildly invisible. Um, very stoic looking, um, but. The more you look around the house, the more you see. There's a fuckload of these guys. There's about a hundred servants in this house, <laughs> right? Anyway, I've described for way too long, so there's, that's the fucking house. Oh, I liked it. <laughs> mm. yeah, Flopsy's going to mirror Bopsy's action and run in while holding his hat. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Dad, it, it it's even better than I thought. Topsy's you... just blinking around. <laughs> Archie looks around sort of disdainfully, like, ugh, not this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, at sort of, not, not, at, not at Flopsy and Topsy's reactions or anything, mm -hmm. but just at the vibe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you, you could probably fit, I, I don't know how many people are in the town, but you could probably fit everybody in here. He's looking around just like absolutely gobsmacked. And he's just taking it all in, like taking small steps and like looking up at the ceilings and like, you know, like his head sort of like reaches back so far that it's almost like he'll tip it over. Yes, yes. Um, wow. And he's just, he's off. He's just walking around mm -hmm. staring at stuff. Uh, Flopsy's gonna kind of go over to Archie and Holland, like, beaming a little bit. This is more perfect than I thought it could be, um... Th really? They don't need to... Well, they don't need to pick up arms, they don't need to try and get themselves into danger or fight anything, they, they don't even need to leave their own backyard. We could go to Nib's cave and find defences and things that will work well for your bow pulling and your wacky wacky and these can just remain how they are it, it is the perfect escape plan hmm. and how long does it like last for oh i i can't fully remember that actually um i i know the key the key has to wait um, about eight hours before you can make this place again. Um, well, DM, I'm sure. Is it 24 hours that it lasts? Yes, it's 24 hours, but you wouldn't know that. <laughs> I wouldn't know that. Okay. No. I didn't know whether to do that in Flopsy voice or my voice. Mm, you've, not uh, had, yeah, I, I, you've not had any instruction about this at all. It's just been given to you as it is. 
Well, yeah. let's hope let's hope it lasts for longer than eight hours, right? Well, I, I hope so, yes. Um, otherwise, I suppose... Y you know about those um, red cap uh, fellows. D do That's they the mostly own... Indeed, yes. Do they only come out at night, or do they attack whenever they please? No, I, I, I it's not like... They only come out when Bavlorn is angry, um, because that's where they come from. You know, she makes them um, somehow, and she so sends. So there's them, no. Oh, sorry. She, well, she doesn't even send them out. She just like lets them loose, and they just do whatever they want. I would have preferred it if it was a bit more like clockwork, and then we could schedule times to bring the house out. You but, think um, clocks work in the Feywild? Well, um, mine has been keeping time quite well. I'd say um, he kind of looks around at how uh, Bopsy and Topsy are walking around. Oh, Bopsy's not even I'd... in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just kind of looks to where they've gone. I'd, I'd say it's it's quite a fun time right now as he holds his pocket watch out. Uh, Archie looks at this pocket watch for the, and, and this is the first time she's seen it and she's like well how do you know what time it is if it always just says fun oh wait um, is it because it's always time for fun wait is this the first time you're looking at it in the exactly. fair world uh, yes. the first, right yes. uh, when you take it out of your pocket um, you see that the minute hand and the hour hand are moving uh, sort of opposite to each other around in circles um, oh. Yeah, and that um, they sometimes it stays still, and then sometimes it like goes really fast, and then sometimes it goes slowly. Um, yeah, it you, you you can't use clocks in the fair world. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Lots of lots of just our reactions accordingly. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I told you they don't work. <laughs> well, I suppose this watch can't possibly be right, but. I don't think it's wrong. He kind of smiles. He knows that was a silly thing to say, but <laughs> he's, he's happy. He's protected his family. <laughs> well, if something's not right or wrong, what is it? I guess you just have to watch and see. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear the pounding of little feet as uh, Bopsy comes skidding back through the marble hallway, and he like grabs onto Holland, and he goes, "You've got to see this! They've got a bowling alley!" And he just starts dragging Holland <laughs> along to, through through the left side of the grand staircase down that corridor, uh, which is adjacent to the library, um, a room at the back. Uh, which, when you walk in, if you do go in there. Um, you can just see that it's a uh, one long, just one, uh, one long bowling sort of alley uh, with a lot of little pins set up, uh, and they all magically sort of fly back when they're knocked over. Um, do you want to play with me? Oh, absolutely. All right, let's go. Um, and he sort of like looks around, like where's the ball? Um, and from the ceiling, you see this like little bowling ball just like descend down really, really slowly, and like almost like a spotlight lands on it, um, and just hovers down in front of whoever steps up to go f first. Um, he would like you. Everyone has the chance to follow and stuff. So if you want to go and play a bit of bowling with uh, Bopsy, you can do. Um, Topsy's in a daze, just sort of following behind yes. everybody. Um, I'm happy going and playing bowling. Yeah, I think I think Archie's gonna come. She's kind of like looking around and just like scoffing at things hmm. like that are very opulent hmm. and fancy. Like, if she sees a suit of armor, she's like, Ugh, "But just for decoration, hmm. all right." <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. So, if you want to play bowling, there's a little game for this. Um, Ooh. All right. Who wants to play? Is everyone playing? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm playing. So we've got Bopsy, Flopsy. Topsy Topsy. is not going to play. He's going to sit with his hands on his knees and stare as though he's in a dream. Um, we've got Holland and we've got Archie. All right. Okay. Bopsy, Flopsy, Holland and Archie. The way this works is this. You can either choose to use strength or dex to throw the ball, 
and uh, the amount that you get depends on uh, the modifier that you'll get to add to how many pins you knock down. So can you say that again? There are ten, right, so there are ten pins. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and basically you, you'll roll to hit. Uh, the DC uh, will uh, then decide how much of a modifier you get to, how many pins you get to knock down. So in other words, there's a DC 10, DC 15, DC 20. Uh, DC 20 is a plus 8. A DC 15 is a plus 6. Don't worry, I'm, I've got all this, you know what I mean. A DC 10 is a plus 4, and you're going to roll a D10 to see how many pins you hit down. So basically, okay. uh, you can choose strength or dex. Uh, whichever order you want to go in as well, you can just decide amongst yourselves. Uh, Bopsy's like, I'm going to go first! <laughs> Straight away. <laughs> um, and basically you'll just do three rounds whoever knocks over the most pins per round wins we're not doing like if you get a strike you get to go three times at the end blah 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 it's not that it's yeah. just three chances to hit down ten pins okay um, does does a ball and ball count as a ranged weapon by the way uh, it's not a weapon no it will just be a okay. dexterity or a strength like base like there's okay. no, nothing else to it alright Shame on me for even asking. <laughs> Bops, Bopsy go oh, Bopsy gets a 15. He gets a plus 6 to how many pins he's going to knock down. So, oh, well, that's all of them. So if it goes over 10, then it's all of them. Uh, right, Bopsy gets a strike straight away. Jeez Louise. All right, Bopsy gets that strike. Flopsy, you're up next. Uh, I'm going to pat uh, Bopsy on the shoulder as he walks back from oh he swags back he swaggers mm -hmm. back i'm gonna like give him a pat on the shoulder as like a well done and then as soon as his back is like towards me mm. i'm gonna stick my tongue out and just go <laughs> <laughs> um he's just gonna and, look uh, at holland and archie and go he's taking the mick out of me isn't he <laughs> <laughs> all right that's a 12, so you're going to get a plus 4 to your d10. Uh, that's an 8 on the d10. Oh, oh, you're all at the same time. Oh, look, at you've done it. That's so cute. All right, so an I'm eight... getting decent at roll 20, you know. <laughs> nice. All right, so you're actually going to get a strike as well. And Bopsy's going to be like, yeah, well, that's just because you're bigger than me. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you're bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> Aw. All right, Holland, you're up. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was just a flat strength or dex. Yeah, it's flat strength or dex. Cool. 16. Nice, you're going to get a plus 6 to your d10. Hmm. Oh, nice. Yep, that's a strike. That's another strike. Everyone's been excellent so far. It's only a poor, <laughs> it's only a poor roll in this house that'll ruin this. <laughs> All right, Archie. Yeah, Archie. Archie picks up the bowling ball and she just says, ah, "Made of marble." Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's a plus four. That's all right. Okay. Um, and roll a d10. A d10. Do, 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 do. No, <laughs> nice. That strikes all round. Bops is just jumping up and down, high fiving everybody, just going, "We're so good at this!" And uh, he, 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 he don't, he, he, yeah, he, 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 not, he don't quite realise that there's a bit of a handicap on this ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a, it's a place of pleasure. It's a place to have fun. Um, all right, it's his turn. He is going to. Uh, take it from Archie's hands and be like, he's going to like look at it really seriously and he's like, right, I need to set the standard now. Oh, bless him. Okay, it gets a bit wobbly. Um, it's a little bit wobbly. Oh my god, he still gets a strike though! Let's go! Wow, is this going to be a full strike game? Right, his aim is true. It really slowly wobbles down, like, like tinks the little one in the lead, and then all of them just fall like dominoes. And he's like, "Oh my god!" And he's having such a great time. Topsy's still just <laughs> staring. Um, Flopsy. Flopsy comes over like very flat-eyed at Bopsy, like confident, like, mm, "Okay, mm, that's what you can do." Mm -hmm. And then throws the ball. Oh, that's a good shot. So that's going to be a plus eight. You can't lose. Unless you get a one. Seven, hey, seven you've got it. Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Like, yep, yeah, you've got it. It's an absolute clean shot. 
Amazing. Jeez Louise. If he literally now it's just gonna come down to who doesn't get one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Wow, these are really strong shots. Holland. Mm. Oh <laughs> and it's Holland who doesn't care. <laughs> uh, well and that one's a gutter ball, so it's I throw yeah. it backwards like a weed <laughs> <laughs> You throw it, yeah, we all jump in the air. <laughs> <laughs> It's just... Sorry, it got stuck to my hand. Yeah, as you throw it back behind <laughs> yourself, it like it's little like sort of like hoverball thing, just like zoom, swerves up and out over all your heads, so not to hit you. Um, yeah, you're not gonna get any there. Sorry, Holland. Um, <laughs> all right, okay. Um, <clears throat> Bopsy is just sort of like trying to not like laugh with glee at you. Um, he feels really good about himself right now. Um, okay, Archie. Yeah, yeah. Archie like picks up the ball. She looks at the pins and she squints and she says, "Oh my god, someone polished the pins." <laughs> hey, you get a plus six. She's complaining about everything. Mm. <laughs> mm. Hey, strike, strike again. Here we go. These are really, really good rolls. Uh, yep, strike again. So far, only Holland is the one that hasn't hit uh, this round. Bops is up. Ah, oh, Bops is going to fail now. I just can see it. Oh, no, it's a 15. That's a plus six. And he's going to get... Oh, oh, six, seven. Oh, six, seven, eight. Two remain. So as he thrusts the ball free, full of confidence, he, like, knocks them all through the middle and the two spares, you know, like, the two little ones at either end still stand there. And he, like, squints at them. And he, like, sort of stamps his foot a little bit. And he's like, no! And, um... He turns around and uh, he's just gonna like like thrust his body towards Flopsy and sort of like as if to like shoulder check him, but in the weakest way. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, he might still win. So he's got uh, he has eighteen point uh, sorry twenty eight points altogether, and that's his final score. Gosh, All right, he's a speaker. Flopsy. Well, good luck, Flopsy. Can Holland use Gus to try and knock Flopsy's ball? <sighs> Holland can do that. I never said he's not cheating in modern games. What a cheeky chap. Mm. Hmm. The devilish little fellow. <laughs> so are you doing I that like to that give move. him disadvantage? Oh, you don't even need to! Need to. <laughs> well, would you like to flavour how you fuck up Flopsy's turn, Holland? You know what? Oh, wait, oh, yeah, Holland. Yeah, take mm. away. Mm. Um, it just like. Flopsy throws it so elegantly, <laughs> and like it seems like it's just going for a gentle stroll, and then it just suddenly goes vertically in the air. Oh my god! Oh my god! Fucking hell! Um, yeah, Flopsy, you got zero then. Well, I, 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 I don't even know how that happened. Well, I at <laughs> least had the most interesting go. Um, if anything, you could say that's certainly the most impressive throw I've ever seen. It must have been a speed bump or something. <laughs> Do you think the third game's a little bit harder? <laughs> it might be the case. Bops is literally just fucking, like, absolutely pissing himself, <laughs> slapping his legs. Like, he's pointing <laughs> right in your face, going, ha ha ha! Like, at you, as if it, that was all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, Holland, you're up next. Yo. Hey, that's a, yeah, that's a plus four. And a foul. Oh, that's nine. Oh. So you knock down nine and that one stubborn little pin remains. Um, oh, hey. So you've got 19 altogether, just one below Flopsy. Um, what's, what's everyone's scores at? So, so far, Bops is at 28, Flops is at 20, Holland's at 19. And finally, Archer. What, what, what's my thing? Just because I'm going to... You've got two uh, strikes so far, so you've got 20. Um, okay. In that case, I'm going to I'm gonna turn to Bops there. And I'm going to say... So it's just you and me, kid. <laughs> and he's like... And Go on, then. If you think you're good at this, then then I'll... Oh, I won't give you this hat. <laughs> he was about to offer the hat, but he's no he's keeping that. What did, what will you give me if I win? I'll bet something in return. Make I'll an give you wager. Um, my horse. You'll give me your horse? My horse toy, yeah. Archie, Archie, like, looks really 
excited about that. And then she says, fine, if if I win, I mean, if you win, I'll give you... Oh, I don't really want to part with it, but this chipped teacup. He looks at it, and he, he tilts his head, and he nods, and he goes, that's a fair deal. No, <laughs> hmm. oh, Mrs. Potts would be so happy. Hmm. Okay, and Archie. <laughs> okay, everything depends on this. Seventeen. Ooh, yes, you're gonna get a plus six to your D ten. Let's as long as I roll like a two. Yeah, <laughs> oh god, least. if you get a don't yeah, jinx it, don't get a one. Hey, that's a strike! <laughs> uh, B- uh, Bopsy holds his hat and he goes, "No!" Well, he comes up to you. He, he like he like strides up to you like he's a, he's a, like a, he's proper swagging. Uh, he holds his hand out to you and he goes, "A shaker." Good game. Absolutely, hmm. it's been a pleasure. Well, um, I came second, and that means I'm better than you and you. And he points at uh, Flopsy and Holland. Flops is just going to do, like, a humble bow. <laughs> what does this toy horse look like? What's that, What sort of horse is it? Um, it's got a, a Flopsy scribbled out on it. <laughs> yeah, but what's, like, the horse breed? Oh, it's just a brown wooden horse. Oh, like a, like a bay horse. Yeah, I don't know horse breeds. Okay. Um, and, yeah... Oh, she starts like she she puts the two toys horses together. She starts clip clopping them about <laughs> on the floor. Oh. Um, he just goes and sits next to his dad and sort of smiles at him. And Topsy's just staring at everyone. And uh, he's like, I can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's just all oh, this is here, just just like this. I really should get out more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, well, we, we should we should invite everyone in the village. Yes, I I think that that is the best course of action. Um, well, I'll I'll say you're in charge from here on out. I I know you can do it. Um, um I I don't know how long this building lasts. Um, it might not last forever, but the key can be used again. So at the first sign of trouble, if you get everybody familiar with what to do, if you put the building in the same place every time, I'm sure nothing bad can happen to anyone. Well, what what do you mean? If it can it disappear? Uh well, you see I'm not familiar with this spell, but the ones that I am familiar with, they they don't last forever. So, this probably will have a bit of a time limit, maybe. Um, I I can't say for sure, but I would be prepared for it to last long enough, but I wouldn't move all of the furniture in here just yet. Oh, um, okay. um, All right, then. So, if it's... If anything happens, then I, I keep hold of this key and I just put it in the air again and twist it and that's it. And it just appears again, is that right? You've got it. You're, you're a natural in this. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, when I was dishing out those keys, uh, did I give it a charge? Or is that was that was just the um, uh, the, the time, to, the, the age turning key? That it was just the age one. Right, yeah, brilliant. That right. it can be used like seven Which times. Which I think Oswald kept, didn't they? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, no problem anymore. <laughs> right, so then, yeah, it's uh, it can be used uh, as long as you th- for as long as you think. You don't know if it has any charges. Um, so yeah, um, uh, he he he's just still looking baffled. Like he he, he can't really say much. Um, but as you mm. sort of like um, standing around there, you see that there are these illusory servants that are sort of like knocking around they they just literally look like plasmoids like sort of you know humanoid body things like six foot tall walking around with like things in their hands um and all of a sudden you sort of see them all stand to like attention and start like walking off in one direction uh towards the kitchen um and a few minutes later wherever you are in the house you're gonna smell a lot of good food cooking
Um, well, it seems like your celebration feast is getting ready, Archie. Hmm. This doesn't bode well with me. <laughs> Top two Why is that? Oh, sorry. What did Holland say? Why is that? Why is that? Oh, just reminds me of my childhood. This place does? Yeah. Why wouldn't it? I mean, this is what houses are like back in... I can't even remember what it's called. But back in wherever we're from originally. Uh, Prismere? No, Prismere is... No, I mean Prismere is here. I think... Wait. I mean the original place where the witch-like carnival was when you came. Oh, your original. Yeah. Oh. That's... This is what... Are you, like, fancy? Well... I don't know if I'd go as far as to say that. Were you like a like a princess? A princess? <laughs> no. My my family like kept horses as prisoners, made them run around and jump over hedges and kept them locked in these wooden boxes. I kind of feel really bad about it. Oh, is that when you had glitter who? Uh, Archie smiles. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, we had this house that was far too big to like get from one side to another in a quick amount of time. And so, if you were ever in your bedroom and you wanted to go outside, you'd have to like spend ten minutes walking, and and like, um, you know. And there was this, like, massive field, like, outside with these... It was just a big field, what, and, and, and all the horses had to stay there. Um, and, oh, and, and we had, like, these people who I didn't even know, who would just walk around and, and like, make you food, but don't ask what food you want. And they would always make horrible food. And then there was, like, this woman, and she was called uh, Nanny Osborne. And, and she used to, like, pull out a horrible dress of all things, which, you know, I wouldn't wear a dress unless I had to, like I did back at the king's place, which I didn't like. Um, but I had to wear a dress, and then and then she would dress me in the dress and, and even brush my hair. Ugh. It was, it was torture. It really sounds it. Ugh. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. All the all the fancy people that come through the carnival, they all have a, a hat like Flopsies. Did, did your dad wear a, a big hat too? Hmm. Well, my dad wore like um he he used to wear this hat. It, it looked a little bit like Flopsy's, except it was, like, red. Um, and he would wear it, but if he took the hat off, then he didn't have any hair. Uh, but if he was wearing it, it looked like he had hair. Because he only had hair on the sides. He had a big bald spot. Huh. Illusionary magic. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know, it was a very strange situation and obviously you know I, I well i couldn't speak back then so i couldn't even complain about it you couldn't speak well not until i was about 10 well then then how did you talk huh. well that's that's an interesting story um it's a bit of a sad one, though. Uh, are you sure you want to hear it now? Uh, if you want to tell it. Well, alright. It was, um... It was the day after the so-called Grand Tourney, where all the horses would 
well, they, they get these really, like, short people, but they weren't, like, halflings or anything. They were just really short humans. Um, and they would all be wearing these weird jackets and, and flat caps, and they would all look like a strange army or something. Anyway, they used to get the horses and, and force them to run around in these big circles and compete against each other. And, like, loads of people would be staring. I I'm sure those horses probably got really paranoid. Um, and it was in the heat of the sun as well. So it was, like, running that fast, you know? It's going to be really warm for them. It wasn't very good. And they would jump over these hedges and stuff. Well, obviously we owned the stables, uh, which is what they called the horse prisons. Um, and Glitterhoof was the star horse. I mean, Glitterhoof was always my favorite, um, and, well, she was running, and one day she tripped over the fence, and, well, they, they, uh, she, she broke her leg, and, um, Archie's, like, crying, like, she's starting to tear up at this point. And, and well, apparently, it's you, you can't fix a horse's leg because they don't run the same. Like that's all that matters is how fast they run, and and so they 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 killed her, yes. and, and and I I remember being in the stables and. And crying, and just crying and crying, and I couldn't speak, or obviously, because I couldn't speak back then. Um, but then this woman comes, and I mean, she was beautiful. Uh, she she had like long, long hair, um, with like wide in it, I think. <laughs> Um, I think it was white hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't really remember that well. Um, and she had like this, this like strange mark on her face. It looked like a chicken's foot or something. And, and she asked me what was wrong. And I told her and I, I told her about Glitter Hoof and, and I told her about how I was feeling and how upset I was. And well, I told her everything that was on my mind. And she gave me a big hug and made me feel better. Um, and she left. And it wasn't until she was actually gone that I realized that I had just been talking that entire time. And since then I was able to talk. Which my dad said was more of a curse than a blessing. Um, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> he's wrong. <laughs> So, you've met you, <laughs> you've met Tashi as well. Two, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <Yeah. laughs> One of the three. I'll get that. It's all right. So oh, you've met Zabilna as well. Zabilna, is that her name? I think so. Right, Flopsy. Oh, I, I, I've been here the whole time. I, I thought I was on the other side of the room. Sorry. <laughs> wow, that's a really sad story. Um, it is strange that you've we've all met Zabilna before. Yes. Hmm. Well, if I didn't know any better, I'd say it was fate. Um, but that is interesting that we maybe maybe everyone's seen her. It's just most people don't talk about it. Well, she seems quite the fairy godmother type to be going around and... She only ever seems to do good things for people, as far as I've heard. I wish she was my godfather. I mean, godmother. <laughs> I actually meant to say godmother. <laughs> um, I wish she was my godmother. That uh, would be cool, apart from the part where she's, like, not here right now. 
Yeah. Has have has uh what art you have heard like from people in Feather about would would she even know who Zabona is or like would she now be sort of piecing two and two together? Um no. I mean piecing what together? Well just like does she know that she used to be here before these hags arrived, or or have people just never mentioned that? Oh no, yeah, the people knew. The, the, the people aren't really sure what's happened to her, uh, like, um, but the people who need to know know, like the people who would feel her missing. Um, not necessarily the Herringon of Mint Muse because they aren't linked to her in a way like you know the warlocks are, um, mm. and other such people who have power links to her. Um, so they don't really the people of the, this area don't really know but um you would have got rumors that things aren't going the same way that they did but you also know that Scabatha shouldn't be there like you know that you know that the hags have sort of taken over individual mm-hmm. sections of the place um and I, and I know like Taz is meant to be the like ruler or something Zabilna is meant to be the ruler of Prismia yeah, that's yeah. what I meant. yeah yeah no, you've never even heard of Tasha. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. I know. The only thing, yeah. you, the only time you that you've ever met, non, known anything about Tasha is that statue at the Witchlight Carnival. That's a uh, Tasha the Wizard's uh, hideous laughter, um, which makes you laugh when you stand near it. And I didn't even know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she didn't. She's she's never going to say Tasha. Um, so she says, um, you know, I didn't know that that was Zabilna. I mean, Zabilna's, like, meant to be in charge around here. Although, you know, who knows what's happened to her. Um, but yeah, she's, like, meant to be in charge, so... Yeah. Mm-hmm. You haven't experienced Prismia while she is in charge, so yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I'm just... No, yeah, but that's yeah. just what I've heard. Yeah. Well, maybe, as you say, it it's something to do with fate. Um, we all... Well, I've, I've known Holland for quite a long while, but... People seem to be coming together who she's helped in the past. Maybe we could help her somehow. Hmm. Um... Tops has started to stand up and actually acknowledge the fact that he's existing right now. Um, he is a, he's sniffling his nose towards the kitchen area, uh, but like the kitchen sort of like a, 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 if it was mirrored, the kitchen would be where the library is, um, and the room that's actually directly to the right when you walk in through the foyer is the massive dining room that could seat a hundred people. Um, and he's just staring at the table and he's like, "Well, um, well, what are we waiting for? Let's um, let's gather up." Let's gather up the village. Um, and as he's sort of walking through the threshold, uh, Bopsy turns around to Flopsy and says, Um, but what happens to our houses if they come, if, if something happens, like you said? Well, um, the most important thing in any of those houses are you, your sisters, <laughs> and everybody else. They can't do anything to the houses that would be worse than doing anything to any of you. Plus, I don't really know much about these these things. Um, but as long as you're inside here, I don't think there's anything to be scared of. They just seem to like people, not their things. He thinks about it for a minute and he goes... I'm going to bring all my toys, and I'm going to tell everyone to bring their toys as well. Um, and you can see that he, behind his back, he's holding the bowling ball as if he's like just like keeping hold of it the whole time as like a memento. Oh. As, as soon as he steps foot outside of the mansion, it disappears into smoke, and his hands sort of clasp around it, and he's like, "Ah." <laughs> um. You see that Topsy's sort of making his way down the grassy hill. Um, he turns around to see that you're still coming, and he looks a bit nervous because obviously the, he's got to break some huge news to the entire town. So, like, 
he doesn't look like he's capable of that considering he's not actually a salesperson or a speaker much. Um, he looks very nervous about this. Uh, Flopsy is going to catch up with Bopsy first. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, brother, um, you've seen how great the new he kind of looks back at cabin hmm. is um how would you feel about telling everybody else how great it is me well not just you we've got dad going down there as well to tell everyone and i'm here and holland and archie we're, we're all coming along but you you've seen the magic of it all and when you were inside there you didn't worry about anything did you well apart from losing but no actually no i didn't um all right well, I'll, I'll, what shall we go and knock on everyone's doors um well there are two ways that news can go. News can either be bad news or it can be good news. And if we go around knocking on everyone's door, um, well, you'd have to tell the news about 20 different times, for one. And that that feels like a bad news situation, going around and knocking on doors and, oh, can I not interrupt what you're doing? And <laughs> No, there's, there's a way of... I think you should watch me closely, Atali. Um, there's a way. There's a, there's a way we can do this. And he's gonna walk like with Bopsy to catch up with Topsy, mm -hmm. so that Topsy doesn't feel he has to go and do it on his own, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. As a as a crying bard, this is literally your thing right now. <laughs> 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 Don't have anything planned. Just gonna fucking there do this on the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the marketplace in like the center. If I started making a ruckus there, would everyone across the different streets be able to hear me? Depends how loud the ruckus is. Because if we're coming down the hill, I could start by marching through the streets. I'm I'm proficient with the drum, but I don't have a drum, but the drum feels more <laughs> fitting than a pan flute right now. <laughs> Is there uh, anything around that I could clump to, like, bang together as, like, a makeshift? Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. uh, Holland fiddles on his, like, like belt piece and pulls unties Thwacko shoes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hmm. Uh, th that should be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to march through the streets, uh, literally marching, like doing a whole kick in rhythm uh, dance, almost like the conga we were doing back at the witch like car. I got the exact same vibe. Um, Flopsy's gonna front it because he's gonna be clapping the clown shoes together like symbols. Mm -hmm. Um, which I, I'm just gonna assume they have to squeak every time they get smacked together. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's just gonna be uh, calling out general, um, beckonings come on come all ladies and gentlemen and everyone else um every, like just gathering phrases to begin with mm -hmm. um to try and gather a crowd towards the center of the marketplace all right D do i need to roll anything for that or am i just honk a honk in these shoes <laughs> yeah you honk a honk in them shoes <laughs> i hope we've got sour and scarf on <laughs> um I do, but it is not playing. Whatever. So. I do not. For the benefit of those watching at home. Hey, hey. Well, they can. So. Roll, um. A persuasion. No, a performance with advantage. Uh, 
27. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Let's just say, how do you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is this for the whole speech? This is for everything that for happens everything. now. Okay, good. Right. <laughs> um, I'm gonna conga line through the streets with the shoes, honka honking, mm-hmm. uh, come one, come all in. Um, as I go through, I'm gonna, as people start coming out of their doorways, I'm gonna kind of, like, give them a look, nod at them, mm-hmm. and then, like, uh, kind of jot my head backwards as if like get in, get behind me <laughs> so that the whole of Mint Muse starts following him like he's Jesus <laughs> uh, I'm going to march through all the individual streets to collect people as we go and then as we get to the centre of the marketplace where I assume there's enough room for a crowd uh, Flopsy is going to stand on top of one of the market stalls mm-hmm. to have elevation um, he is also going to look down at Bopsy, lift him up <laughs> as mm. if he's Simba, and then plop him next to him on the stall. Mm-hmm. Um, I also assume Holland and Archie are at the front where the stall is as well, and not getting lost in crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, anyway. mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel as if there's been some unpleasant vibes going through the town lately, and that just won't do. Not at all. Um, You might all be wondering what we do next. Um, How do we protect ourselves? And all of that jazz. Well, Hmm. as you can see from my two fantastical bodyguards right here, (laughs) Holland and Archie, (laughs) I have never had to worry about such a thing, and I have been to many a more nefarious place than this. This place shall never become nefarious. And as far as I can see, you will never have to have the worries that you think you may be having now. Hmm. Um, I kind of look at Topsy to get a read on how like, confident he is. Mm-hmm. Topsy's <laughs> just staring at you in awe. <laughs> like You can't believe that you've drummed up a crowd this big. It's literally the practice. It's it's the whole town. <laughs> uh, Flopsy's going to leave Bopsy at the stall. Uh, he is going to jump down and start walking through the crowd. So you may be having concerns. You may be wondering, should I learn how to swing a stick? Should mm. I learn how to throw something sharp? Well, fear not. None of that. I think you should... Go about your day just the same way as you go about your day any other day. Hmm. Bake cakes. Play musical instruments. Um, play games. Run around. Climb trees. He zones in on different people mm. as he says different things. Mm-hmm. And if trouble is to ever rear its head in this town again, there is one man that can help you out. I'm going to turn to the Topsy and like nod at him <laughs> to try and make him a bit stronger as I'm gonna Topsy's like stare oh, like, as, it, as, lot, as yeah. soon as you look to him he looks behind him like um <laughs> <laughs> and he, and he puts, puts his finger against his chest like me oh um yes um yes this um uh, we have um a key and he holds it up to the crowd he's literally shaking like he's got like the worst <laughs> stage fright you've ever seen um. Th- yeah. That's the 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 this um this the this um this 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 we do this, this, we do have a key. We don't have a key. We have the key, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> this key right here that my father holds in his hand is the key to remaining just as you are, not having to change, not having to fight, not having to worry, but to be safe. I would like to lead you all to what this key can do. Um, but unfortunately, um, I kind of squeak the clown shoes, but mm-hmm. I'm going to purposefully make them squeak like a little bit uh, <laughs> minor scale rather than major scale. <laughs> 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 but minor unfortunately, scale I. Rather than major scale. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. I don't know if that makes any sense. Not a music guy, but let's go with it. <laughs> um. And I'm just going to kind of look up to Bopsy. 
I seem to have used all of my energy running around and gathering you all here. I, um, I might need a hand showing them just exactly what all of this means. Mm -hmm. Um, a hand? I can give you a hand because I have got not one but two hands, ladies and gentlemen and everyone else. Who's saying that? Bopso. Of course he is. Mm. <laughs> and he's like looking at Flopsy for lead. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't have any other musical instruments. I don't think Bopsy's gonna be like proficient in musical instruments. But hey, I rolled a twenty-seven. I'm gonna mm. give Bopsy one of the shoes, and as we walk, we're both gonna use them as symbols, yeah. just smacking each other. <laughs> it likely becomes a bit of a like fight towards the end of trying to actually hit each other with the shoes <laughs> rather than hit the shoes against each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're squeaking in rhythm all the way along as uh, Flopsy's like, "Come on, come on, everybody." Uh, the entire town look extremely like like flabbergasted, um, but they can't help but be compelled to just move with you all as this energy has just been so like sort of um, like rapturous uh, that they're like oh, um, oh, oh um. and then you can see like the Ned Flanders one who's like whispering to the others of like what's actually happened and then you see that as soon as someone hears some news they start like scurrying even faster. Um, you see, like, a few of them sort of leave the conga line to, like, run into the house and bring, like, stuff with them, um, like, really quickly. And um, you see that Topsy's sort of, like, passing everyone in the queue, just going, yes, that's right, um, get in line, it's 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 a miracle. Um, yes, um, you know, he's just he, he's trying to be endearing, but it's, he's just baffled. Um, and then he sees sort of your mum and the girl sort of like in near the back sort of mops his smiling at you as this to be like, you know, what? <laughs> you know, like as if you've done this. Um, but the girls are just like, way, let's go. It's like a, just an adventure. Um, and yeah, you fucking pad papa him up that hill. <laughs> uh, when we get to the door, or yeah, when uh, me and Bopsy get to the doors of the cabin, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to kind of stand with my shoe hand uh, towards Bopsy <laughs> and just get him and go, are you ready? One last final hit. He stands with his shoe hand against yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's going to high five Bopsy with the shoe hand <laughs> to make a big squeaky honk. <laughs> um, and as he does that, he's going to cast Prestidigitation for a big ta-da moment of fireworks going around the uh, door frame. Oh. So it presents it to everyone. Flopsy basically doesn't want anybody to worry about the threat that's happening. He wants everybody to be focusing on the miracle that mm -hmm. means they don't have to worry anymore. Mm -hmm. So he's just going to go all out on like firework display as much as prestidigitation can handle. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start like shooting fireworks and like shooting stars out of, of like everywhere and it's all like sort of raining down. Um, everyone just starts like cheering and like giving these big whoops and stuff, but some of them don't really know what they're cheering for because you're just standing in front of this watery door. Um, <laughs> <laughs> A watery door! <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, people are like, well, what's going on? <laughs> what's what? What is that anyway? Um, but they're all smiling and laughing. It's like you've got this contagious like, joy surrounding mm. everyone. Flopsy yeah. just kind of looks at everyone smiling and goes, Ah, well, you're probably wondering what's behind the watery door. Mm. Um, well, allow me to show you something that your mind might not actually be able to accept at first. So mm. you may want to come in and then go out and then, most importantly, come back inside again. But not <laughs> only after running all the way around the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, after me. And Flopsy leads them in. Alright. As they all pile in, the sort of, um... What's the word? The, the... The crowd just becomes sort of, like, all of a sudden contained in this echo chamber of, like, laughter and cheering and, as, as like, just these noises of awe and gasps and... And like, wow, look at this! And, like, uh, loads of people, like, inspecting the, the Greek-esque statues a bit, like, 
you know, below the waist, like, huh? <laughs> you know, like, huh? Okay. Um, and, like, it's all very, you know, stupidly artistic and um, over the top, you know, um, but the majority of the little bunny noses are actually up in the air sniffing. Um, and you can hear people going, oh, you know, what's that? And uh, aiming towards the, the dining room where you can see this massively long table. Um, it seems to have gotten a bit longer. And um, you can see these faceless sort of forms of servants just laying out these little cloistered uh, trays, lifting them up. And oh my goodness gracious me, the colours, the textures, the smells, all these different foods, like little... Uh, like like massive chickens or like um, tiny tiny little sort of like pastries and sweets and m big balls of mash, um, so much food going on um, all over this table all of a sudden, and he, everyone's eyes are just so wide and like it's like they're dreaming. Like people are like it's like when you're at a party and like people have just had like the best time ever they're all like sort of looking around and they don't quite know who to speak to first or what to do um and they all just like sort of dreamily sit down at this table and some of the kids have already like ran off into different rooms and stuff like that it's it's quite the fiasco <laughs> mm. um mopsy sort of comes up to you all and she's like well this is a surprise <laughs> um where did... How is this? What is this? Well, um... Strangely enough, I, I had this on me the entire time. Um, it's quite a surprise to us as well. Um, at least how big it is. And all of the, um... Food. Is, but... this, is this your house? Oh, no, 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 no. No, not, 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 not this. No, this is far too expansive for for me um it, it it's simply one of my keys um um clapperclaw who's actually been with the two girls and mopsy the whole time uh emerges from behind mopsy's dress and um he's like oh my goodness gracious me um you had this in your back pocket the whole time you didn't even tell me uh well Yes, um, un unfortunately, um, I, I, I would have told you if I had known it was just this impressive. <laughs> well, you, you see all that food over there? Uh, y yes. Well, you're about to see something real special. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he, 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 like, backs away from you, but all the while staring at you with his, like, skull face. Um, and then he just swivels his head round and just, like, dunks it in a pile of mash. And you just see his little mouth, like, nom, 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 uh, as he's, like, chewing it all up. And he turns around to you and his face is just absolutely full of mash. Uh, and he gives you a big thumbs up. Um, <laughs> and when he... Thumbs up, with his claws. <laughs> Legit. And when he when you see that everyone's just chowing down, as the bowls are emptying, the servants come out with different food, like a second course, and will continue to do so for nine courses. <laughs> um yeah. <laughs> it's literally a banquet happening right now. Like there's like delicate things too, like like unknown food that you might not have even seen before that's so Highly posh. I mean, Archie, you probably have, but um, yeah, they're like eating little crackers with like ca caviar on it and stuff, and you know, it's ridiculous. Um, and Topsy sort of like saddles up to you all, and he's like, "Well, um, I think this is the best thing that's happened to us ever, apart from you coming back, of course." Well, uh. I'm I'm just glad that I could help out, Dad. Um, hmm. And you you definitely don't need to feel like you're doing any of this alone. I I know I told the crowd to look for you, but that is just because. Well, I I hope they see you like I have seen you over the last few days. Hmm. But you've always got. Um, and he looks over at Bopsy, probably stuffing his face or hmm. playing with the other kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, Bopsy's actually taken to showing some of the other school kids around, like, you know, showing them where things are, like he owns the place. 
Mm. Mm -hmm. You've always got Bobsy. He he's like me. He's a smart boy. Mm. A little bit childish, but don't ever hold that against him. Mm. No, I can see that. Um, you're a, you're a good influence. Um, and perhaps I should stop thinking of you as a child now, considering you are probably a bit taller than me, actually. And he sort of stands on his tiptoes a little bit. <laughs> Flopsy um, bends his knees a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm sure I'll be quite safe here. Um, do I just lock it when... Can anyone come in, or... I just... He looks down at it, and he's, he looks reluctant about his power, and... Just, as far you know. as I'm aware, you can just lock it, yes. Um, I, I think it's just people that you want to come in that can come in. You can just lock the door. Um, Dad, I, I know I'm putting a lot on you. If, if you feel that someone else should have this, as long as you trust them, then I trust them. Hmm. I'll give it to your mother. I, I think she's probably better having it than me. Um, I don't want to lose it or something or, you know, um, make a mistake or, you know, she's always been the pragmatic one. Um, you know. Um, he's, he's just going to put it in his jacket pocket for now. Um, and pat it. Well, um, I, I guess you'd be... You'll be heading off soon. Uh, un unfortunately, yes, we we have a bit of a time frame. We, we need to um, take care of things within. Um, so, yes, we we should be off, shouldn't we, guys? I'm assuming the guys are around me, unless they're elsewhere. And if they are, then yeah. What are, uh, what are, what are Holland? Think. What's Holland and Archie doing whilst Flopsy and Topsy are talking? Standing very still in the depot's position. <laughs> 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 we haven't been loaded into the game yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, Archie's probably just like, um, like looking around at some of the art on the walls mm. and and just going oh, <laughs> what is this <laughs> <laughs> uh holland would have wandered off with uh, clapper claw i think mm. uh yeah when you do wander off with clapper claw uh clapper claw is like hey open your bag <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> he just starts tipping loads of sweets into your like bag and pockets <laughs> Um, he's like, don't tell anyone, okay? And we'll, we'll take all these oh. around with us wherever we go. Good haul. Uh-huh. Should we put some cakes in there too? And maybe a little bit of this ham? And he just like picks up an <laughs> entire leg of ham. <laughs> it's like greasy with like like honey. <laughs> like It drips onto the ground with like a big glob. Like... I don't think that should go in with the sweets. We need to get a separate bag for like savory food. All right, okay. Um, um. Oh, I wonder where a bag would be in my hand right now. And a servant comes along with a bag and just like gracefully puts <laughs> it in his hand. Uh, it's like a brown paper bag, and he's, and he just like plops it open like, phew, and uh, he's like, "All right, fit it in. You put it in. I'll hold the bag." I I don't think. That's gonna last because Bobsy had a bowling ball and it disappeared. Oh, so no. I think our food is gonna end up on the floor if we try and leave. Oh, well, that's not. We, we can't take anything from in here. Maybe Flopsy has a spare hat that we could use as a bowl. Hmm. Ah, uh, all right. And uh. He's just gonna go up to Flopsy as he's talking to his dad and just stand and stare at him. <laughs> so yes, we should probably be leaving some uh, um, Hello. Um you're staring at me. Hi there. I was just wondering if I could put some 
If I could put a leg of ham in your hat. <laughs> just, a, a just for a little very, while. That's a very strange request, Crapper Claw. Um, I've had chickens in my hat. I've, I've had plenty of things in my hat. I don't think I've ever had a ham in my hat. Well, guess what? This is your first time for everything, right? I, I, I've given most of my hats away. Um, I, I don't really know if I have a, a hat that could accommodate a ham right now. Um. Well, we could just wrap it up inside that there. Uh, what is that? And he's like looking. Her, he's like literally got his hand in your back right now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, what's this? And he's gonna pull out the crown. Well, um, that's that's something that I, I don't really think should have ham grease slathered all over it. Um, well, it's all right. I can lick it off. <laughs> <laughs> Is he holding the ham while he's doing this as well? Oh, yeah. He's got a full leg of ham in one hand and your crown in the other. And he's about to put those two together. <laughs> can I roll a stealth check to be like behind the clapper claw and like eating bits off the ham as he's holding it? <laughs> 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 yeah, go on then. Uh, do, it, do it with advantage because he's midway through trying to actually convince Flopsy to give the fucking crown. What's even going on? <laughs> 15. 15 against his... Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Come on, Clapperclaw. Uh, Clapperclaw who can see it all around himself. Uh, <laughs> Clapperclaw who, uh, who is going to do uh, a check, is going to do a perception... Uh, da -da -da -da. <laughs> Six, um, yeah, you mm. you are just nibbling around the entire thing. Um, he doesn't even notice that it's like his hands moving slightly as like you like eat against it, um, and he's just staring directly into Flopsy's soul, holding the crown. Just because of how absurd the moment is, I actually want to do this based on a roll. I want him to try and persuade me with a persuasion roll. All right, okay. Just gonna be staring at me with those clapper claw eyes. Seventeen. Uh, Do a charisma what... save. Charisma save. I was gonna say what contests it. Um... I'm sorry, clapper claw. You you simply can't put a ham hock in a crown. It it it's just too 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 precious. I'll I'll find something for the ham. Um. If only I had another hat, he gestates, and a servant plops a hat in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, before, as you lift your hand up to plop the hat in, um, roll a perception check. Uh, six. <laughs> he goes, oh, uh, it doesn't matter, what a shame. And then he's just going to walk away with Holland, like, giggling. Um, Holland, <laughs> roll a perception check. Okie dokie. Yeah. Uh, you, you saw that uh, as t uh, Flopsy turned to look at the, the servant, uh, Clapperclaw put the ham in Flopsy's bag and walked away. <laughs> so there's a there's a little ham leg sticking out of his bag, but Flopsy, you don't know because you got a six feet perception. <laughs> He's literally slid <laughs> the ham into the bag. Uh, you you would have seen it anyway because you were right there next to it, but yeah. As we walk away, I'll just be like, Ooh, this tastes so good. Mm, I love <laughs> ham. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yummy. I'm so glad we decided to eat it instead of just storing it away somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to eat this whole thing right now. Oh, look, it's oh, gone. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that boy can eat really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Topsy's just gonna like shake his head and is is gonna uh, oh, uh, Bopsy and the two girls come running in um, and uh, the the girls are so excited uh, they come running up to Archer and they go um, are we going to play uh, shall we play with all of this armor and, and swords says well, uh, <laughs> says uh, Wopsy well Wopsy is there any little girl sized armor. I don't know. Do I need little girl mm. size armor? Well, you might, you might struggle to get around if you have big armor on. Um, do you have? Well, are there any wooden swords? 
Um, remembering, well, Archie's just been st- stood, like, <laughs> watching the, the entire thing mm. that's just gone on. Um, um, and with your passive, you'd have seen it as well. Yeah. If only, if only I had some wooden swords. <laughs> Again, a, s- a servant appears with a stack of wooden swords for you. Oh, thank you. And if only I had some uh, pretend armor that would fit two little Harangon girls. And me, says Bopso. Oh, and one for a little boy <laughs> who's also a Harangon. Um, <laughs> the, the servant sort of like, l- without a facial expression, sort of sighs a bit like, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then like b- produces two little like, sorry, three little uh, like sort of wooden clad armor like as if it's studded but studded with wood um mm. like you could just slip it over like a sort of clapperboard yep mm. um that's just gonna help the kids get into um into the armor and, and hand them each a sword mm. um and then she has a little think and she decides she's going to teach them actual fighting maneuvers rather than just like play fight mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, go on, roll a, roll a performance to see how well you can teach them. And, yeah. I'll, and I'll roll to see how well they can be taught. <laughs> yeah. Okay, performance. Oh, goodness. Uh, no, 17. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right. Bopsy is barely Bop- paying attention to you. Like, Bopsy. Bopsy is literally just trying to hack at your ankles the whole time. Like, every Fine, single. It's <laughs> All right. Hopsy. Hopsy's listening, but Hopsy's not quite good at it. She's just sort of like, you know, uh, she's she's not as graceful. Um, ooh, but Wopsy! <laughs> Wopsy! Oh, wow, Wopsy is completely enamoured by you. She's completely engaged with every single thing that you say. She like she is equally listening as you are equally teaching her. Um, and every time, like, Bopsy's trying to annoy you, she's like, Bopsy, get out of the way. Now, go and play with Hopsy over there. And uh, Bopsy and Hopsy fuck off with each other and start, like, just, like, fighting on the staircase. Um, and uh, <laughs> Mopsy's like, be careful now on the stairs. Um, and one of the servants just looks over and, like, plops down a little sort of trampoline just in case they fall. And, um, <laughs> yeah, you've got, Wop- you've got uh, sorry, Wopsy's full uh, attention here. Um, yeah. You know what? She'll get a. She's gonna get a plus one um, from this experience. That's awesome. Mm. Um, and then I say, now if only I had, and then I sort of whisper this, a gold star sticker. <laughs> um, a sort of a, a a scroll falls from the ceiling and lands in your hand, and then you unravel it, and it's a sheet of of uh, gold stickers. <laughs> oh, and I, I'm going to take a, a gold sticker off and I'm going to place it on her, like, um, her little dress or, or what she's wearing. Yeah, she literally wears like a potato sack. I'm not even kidding. Like, it's like, she doesn't <laughs> oh. like clothes that much, so she just makes her own. Um, I'm going to put it on her potato sack. Yeah. She like presses it down as it sort of doesn't really stick that well to the material, but she presses it down really hard. Um, and she, she looks up at you. Um, and she's just going to sort of give you this really big hug. Um, and as she's, like, hugging you, you can feel like she's, like, sort of, like, taking in all of your essence. Like, sort of, like, as if you smell, like, vanilla or something. And, like, she's oh, just going to oh, give you... vanilla? Well, I mean, you, you're you going to smell like something sweet, you know? Archie, Archie, it actually does smell like brownies. Brownies, yeah. Mm. Mm. And she's just going to sort of nuzzle in to you a little bit, like you're a, you're a celebrity or something that she's obsessed with. Um, oh. yeah, um, I'm gonna yeah. give her a big hug back. Mm. And then when you pull away from the hug, she's gonna pretend that she's gonna like feign away from you, but then she's actually gonna try and hit you with the sword. Um, oh. uh, with a plus one. Oh, that's 11 d20s. We don't want that. <laughs> Hold on uh, a minute. <laughs> uh, with a little plus one. Oh, she gets a nat one. Uh, you see it coming a mile away. You knew she was going to do this the whole time with a little cocky self. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can parry however you like. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like parry to, to the. In fact, because I knew it was going to happen, mm. I'm gonna like just like lift my head up like I'm looking proud at myself mm. and without even looking because I know exactly what she's going to do because mm-hmm. she's going to do exactly what I taught her yep. and I know how to deflect that mm-hmm. I'm going I'm going to um, 
like just basically like knock the sword out of her mm. hand after like doing it, and mm. then and then uh, say, oh, and rule one: never underestimate your target. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's just gonna laugh and like pick the sword back up again, um, and yeah, uh, Mopsy comes over to top, so it looks like they're getting ready to say some goodbyes. Um, and yeah, Bopsy and Hopsy are on the stairs, sort of notice them two coming over and standing like like they're gonna be saying some goodbyes. They just drop all of the stuff and it clatters around everywhere. Wopsy doesn't. Wopsy's staying with Archie. Um, Wopsy, you get the impression that Wopsy isn't a very like sentimental person. That she just likes stuff that's cool and that's it. She's not gonna be near the goodbye. Um. But yeah, you can see them all sort of come over and look a little bit expectantly. Uh, is that with Flopsy? I guess we, me and Clapperclaw will go over as well. Yeah. Well, I, um, I suppose this is it for now. Um, I'm, I'm just so happy that everyone can be safe and everyone can just be how they're supposed to be. Hmm. Mopsy's like, you've all done so much for us. Look how, well, I mean, look at the children, for starters. Um, she just sort of beams down at everybody. And uh, looks up at you with a little teary eyes. Well, we we do need to be getting on. Um, there's there's a lot to still be done. This this is a solution to all the immediate problems, but there are still bigger problems that we we will fix. And then you can go back to having all of this fun back in. All of your cottages again. She's just gonna hug you, and uh, Topsy's gonna hug you as well at the same time. And then you feel like a little across your legs. Uh, you feel Hopsy hugging one of your legs, and you feel Bopsy hugging your other leg. Um, and you don't feel Mop <laughs> Wopsy hugging yeah. you at all. <laughs> um, uh, you just uh, all four of them just sort of ho hold on to you. As uh, Mopsy is hugging Flopsy. Mm -hmm. He's gonna kind of whisper, but loud enough, like it's not like stealthy. I'm, I'm going to be coming back, Mum. I, I don't want you thinking that I'm walking away and not coming back. She says, "Um, well, we'll all be waiting for you." We'll just right, I... right here. That's where we'll be. Safe and sound. Well, that... I, I can't say when, but... I know I was gone for a long time before, but I... I will be back much sooner this time. Um... It, it, it doesn't work here, um... So you you can't use it to measure the time, but I I I want you I want you to have something. Um, I well I I gave the key to Dad, but I I think he may have already given it to you, or he will at some point. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> but I I wanted you to have hold of this. Uh, I'm gonna give her the stopwatch that has fun marked to all the different um, hour points hmm. she's gonna I've... sorry oh uh, she can do yeah she's she just wants. gonna look down at it and just do a little smirk as if to be like of course um and if it's on a chain she's gonna pop it over her head and tuck it into her shirt next, now, next it, to her heart it, it, <laughs> it might not look like it from the watch that you just saw but i i have done a lot of growing up since i left um, he kind of, he kind of like 
doesn't cough, but he kind of like corrects himself a little bit, as if making it a sales pitch makes it easier to say. Hmm. Um, how do I? The carnival that I I work at. I have a job, Mum. Hmm. The carnival opens at eight sharp. By eight o two, I have my first crowd. By eight o five, the first batch has been sold and eaten. And by eight o six, we've refreshed the stand. Me and my protege, Winston. I know it takes one minute and three seconds to frost a tray of standard cupcakes. <laughs> Using my specific method to my specific standards, it takes two minutes to frost a tray of butterfly cupcakes. <laughs> I know I might still look like the ungraceful and bumbling little boy, but back home, back at work, I'm finally in tune to the tick of the clock. I have to be. Because otherwise, the whole operation crumbles like cookie dust. <laughs> and that there, I'm gonna touch the uh, watch that she's put uh, around her. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most important things that I own. I just, I'm, I'm sorry that I was gone for so long, and I, I want you to know that I am, I'm definitely going to come back. I have to because, because you have, well, <laughs> because of who you all are really, but as long as you have that, you can, you can count on me coming back. <laughs> she just like laughs through her tears. Um, you see a little mouth wobbling as she's like, okay. Um, and she doesn't really have much else to say to other than just to trust that that's true. Um, hmm. and, she's, and if they ever run away, I can locate that bitch like a motherfucker. Hey! <laughs> um, hey! Oh, yeah. So, yeah, she's just going to put a hand on a heart and, again, they're all going to squeeze you again. Um, Clapper Claw is actually going to... Clapper Claw has been waiting to interrupt you this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Clapperclaw is literally stood next to Holland, like going, um, are we going to get out of here anytime soon? I can feel my pockets are bulging. <laughs> and, and I, don't, I don't think that I'm, I'm going to last much longer. You can see his pants are falling down at the back a little bit. Um, he's like literally like wearing a, he's like wearing like a sumo wrestler suit at this point. Like he's literally every <laughs> single part of his clothes where he would stuff himself with hair is just filled with food, like he's literally trebled in size. I think I'm gonna burst. <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't we go outside now? Alright, okay. All right, see you out there, Flopsy. I, I need to. Uh, he's just gonna like lunge straight through the door, and as soon as he walks through the door, he's gonna like trip over a little bit, squish so much of his fucking cakes that are in his chest as he falls flat on his chest. And he's like, oh! No, I'm gonna have to eat those first. <laughs> you hit Wait, does none of the food actually dissipate when he leaves? No, because if it did, you'd starve to death. Um, so, no, food. Food, food is the only thing that you can take out of this house. Um, so yeah, he runs He runs out there and, and Holland, you and him are out there on your own uh, in this field of absolute just glorious sunshine. Um, the fresh air hits you. It's very warm and close. Um, slight breeze, all that kind of nice summer vibe. Um, and he's just flat on his face, like, ow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Holland's going to sit down next to him and we're going to take inventory of all the stuff we bought. Bought, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, that we stole it. <laughs> yeah, um, I'd say you could you could make a fair healthy list of what would fit in a small uh, scarecrow's body. Um, Food-wise, you can do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah <he's> just <laughs> so gonna... We're just going to sit there, like, stacking them up. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, it's sort of the thing of, like, Two for you, one for me, but instead of like splitting them up like that, it's just one for Lace up, one for Clapper Claw now. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, he's, he's just gonna sit like a sort of teddy bear, legs, you know, legs really far apart sort of thing, like, um, yeah, I always see him at 45 degree angles, so his legs are like 45 degree angles, um, as he sort of like piles it all up in between on the grass, um, it's like a little picnic, um, and yeah, the door is sort of shut behind you, um, so you just see the shimmering door that you're sort of sitting next to, um, inside, uh, the hug sort of releases, um, Topsy says, well, um, I think your friends are eager to to go. Um, I don't want to keep you any longer, but um, yes, um, we'll, yes I... we'll be right here. I'll, I'll find you sooner than you know. Um, I'll, I'll just, I'll fix everything I need to before. Uh, uh, if I don't leave, I'll probably be here saying goodbyes for another hour or two. Hmm. Um, it's been so good meeting you all again. Hmm. He's gonna like hug them all again and then slowly like go towards the door. Mm -hmm. Um, as you are exiting, um, I'm guessing Archie's going as well. Nope, Archie's staying here. She's leaving <laughs> forever. <the pack>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. Um, Archie. Well, I think Archie's being like sort of hanging out, hanging out with Wop. So she mm -hmm. sees. Sort of making the way to the door, mm -hmm. and Archie says, "Okay, Watsy, I'll probably see you again. But remember what I've taught you, and also remember this: good people learn to fight so that they never have to." And then she leaves. Watsy nods as if it's the most sage advice she's ever heard her in her entire existence, and sees that as a sort of like, "You are now my like knight." <laughs> You know what I mean, <laughs> sort of thing, and holds yeah. the wooden sword like it means everything to her. And, oh um, no! I, actually, I'm also going to take the sword mm. and sit on your knee. No, oh, she beams with like absolute delight, and uh, she like flops her head down so far that her, both of her ears just like touch the ground. I'm gonna uh, tap her on the shoulders with the sword. I and as I do that, I say, "I done thee," mm. uh, and then as I tap her, uh, well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say, um, Sir Wapsy, uh, Lapo, Lap what's your last name? Lapoose. <laughs> Lapoose. Sir Wapsy Lapoose. And as I say Lapoose, I sort of like slightly bunk her on the head with it, <laughs> but not too hard. Mm -hmm. And I, I give her a big smile and I hand her the sword. <laughs> she holds it and like grabs off both her hands over it and nods at you. Stands up, and she's not crying or anything. She's just very respectful about that. Um, and then I, and then I give her a bow, and mm. I, and I leave with that. <laughs> um, yeah, you leave. You, you, you go out there and you see fucking Holland and Clapperclaw just like <laughs> piling up all this food. Um, and Flopsy, as you sort of standing in the the doorway, um, as you close on it, you sort of see Bopsy's little head sort of looking at you and looking at you until the the gap starts to close. And it's not even a door closing, it's just the rest of the world, you know, that closes him out and in this little safe space that you've created for him. And it's almost like before you shut the door, he sort of like opens his mouth to say something, but the door shuts and he's just like, oh. um, and you're outside in the glorious sunshine on the hill. With uh, Clapperclaw, Holland, Archie, knowing that I've got some more. <laughs> uh, can we please run until half past? Because obviously I've um, done a lot of stuff today. <laughs> um, I think that should be okay. Um, yeah, we'll give it another 45. And Mint Muse, again, it's literally the height of the day. It's not like, there's, the day's not coming to a close anytime soon. You've got plenty of time. I'm just letting you know that's the reason why I'm saying that you've got time. Um, it's been the morning. It's around about 1pm, so. Um, and, yeah, you you all stand together. Apart from Clap Claw, who sat down on the ground, fucking <laughs> scranning. Boy, am I glad to be out of that mansion. The air was so stuffy in there. It probably wasn't, but she's complaining <laughs> about it. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to feel like the sun again. Mm, nothing beats the sun. 
and the fresh air and and the ground beneath your feet not being so hard and shiny. Well, I agree. It's not exactly the most fashionable looking place, but um, I'm still glad it's there. Um, it, it's not really our style, though, is it? You kind yeah, of it's like, not like not out here. No, sorry, I'm just agreeing. <laughs> What is your style? Are you saying this while it... walking through to the town? Yeah. Yeah. Is that specifically to Flopsy or just? Uh, it's it's a general question because um, you said it's not our style, so she's looking at sort of um, both of you and on a lesser scale. <laughs> Um, <laughs> 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 um, and and she's, uh, she asks. Well, I can't speak for any of you, but my style is the best style, whatever looks best. Um, but I assume, based on how we all work well together, um, it's open air, um, grass underfoot, um, any other th what what is your style holland if you were to describe it um i think it's like uh colors and environments and um things <laughs> Flopsy is nodding at you as if this is really insightful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Archie agrees. <laughs> uh, Archie says, M My like style, I like trees. I like tree areas. I like to be up in a tree. I think there's nothing safer than being in a tree because nothing can get to you unless it can fly or if you fall. But other, but you know, don't fall. I never do. Nothing can get to you. Except for B. You can't climb trees, Holland. Well, maybe you can. I can. Yeah, but I bet I can... I, be <laughs> I bet I can climb up a tree faster than you can. Hmm. I smell a competition. Hmm. Do you want to make a bet? Okay, what do you what are you betting? Well, let me let me think. I don't know, she sort of rifles through her bag. Hmm. What would be Oh okay. I got something really good. Okay, you're gonna This this is a pretty big bet, so you're gonna have to bet at something just as good. But <laughs> I've got all of these pressed flowers and and Ooh. loose dried petals <laughs> pulls out a little bag and shows you <laughs> well now that that is tempting hmm. well i suppose i should find something that kind of matches uh i've got some some uh, telepathic clover left over how about that how much do you have? Um, I can't remember. I think it was just one. <laughs> that wouldn't, that wouldn't be very useful. Come on, this is some really good stuff. It's not just the sort of stuff you could find lying around somewhere. Uh, one uh, bush, I mean. So that's like three uses, you know what I mean? That's one for each of us. Oh, well, in that case... I can see why we might... Yeah, go on, then. I can make you that <laughs> offer. <laughs> if it really is three uses, Holland. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it is. Alright, then. Let's make that, that bet. <laughs> so you, you come down the sort of grassy uh, hill and through the the desolate town it's completely empty doors still left open and you know almost ransacked in a way that they've left so quickly and 
you make your way through this quiet empty town all the way down the main road to the entrance that you came through in the first place into the forest itself and there are mm. plenty of trees to choose from here absolutely so many uh, sort of different heights of different sort of uh, textures they're, they're all gnarled in different ways um, is there any particular tree that you'd like to challenge Holland to? Well, I was the challenger, Holland, so I think you should be the person who gets to decide which tree. Hmm. Let me see. Hmm. Uh, he's going to look around. Is there any with, like, orange leaves? It's funny that you say that. Um, you walk for quite a while along this path. Uh, you actually end up emerging into the clearing that you landed in. Uh, you notice the swamp gas balloon sagging and laying on the ground with the basket there, just still there exactly how, how you left it. Um, and beyond that, uh, more trees. You sort of spend a good long while deciding how to, you know, how to do this. You know, you want you want to find one that's got these sort of golden orange. Uh, tint to it um, you actually walk for about 25 minutes to find something like that and you first notice somewhat of a, a glow in the distance uh, sort of through the trees themselves this sort of hazy green filter over it all um, as you travel on and you notice this. Archie, upon seeing this, you're actually immediately alarmed as the the leaves on the tree itself are so orange and so um like sort of brown golden. Um it looks very different to the rest of these luscious green trees. It doesn't look healthy and you actually get a bit sort of scared for this tree when you see it. Um, but Holland being sort of none the wiser about the, this area, um, you notice this tree as, yes, that's the one. That is the tree I want to climb. Ooh, this one's got Lyra's colours. This is the one. Uh, I don't know. It kind of looks a little bit upset. It's absolutely massive as well. Does it? Uh, let's get a closer look. Just popping you on the map. I don't know if you can see yourselves at the bottom there. I can't oh. move. Alright, okay. Oh, if I put you on, you can't move yourselves, can you? Weird how the rules work. <laughs> I don't know how that is, but... Uh -huh. um, yeah. Uh, it's... Uh, let me just uh, actually read what it says here. Um, yeah. It's a gigantic, gnarled oak that comes into view and unlike the other ones it just looks unhealthy with its golden sort of like brownish orange leaves um, and you see this sort of thick carpet of dead leaves surrounding it underneath and sleeping um, sort of not not sleeping these look like they're sleeping that's why I said that uh, standing around sort of like on the actual tree itself are these four goats that are just sort oh. of staring at you all like like just bleating like meh and a single rusty sickle lies right here uh, on top of this, uh, inside the sort of petals of this giant flower, um, like poking out. And you can see uh, this tree is incredibly tall, and because of its gnarled nature and texture to it, um, you feel that this might be a habitat of some kind, especially Archie would think that, but Holland sees it as Holland sees it, like wow look at the colors this is amazing this is beautiful um yeah i don't know what flopsy thinks but you two are looking for a tree and here it is <laughs> i have a question yes is it integral that they are goats is it like a pun or something because if they're not coming make them sheep i'm terrified of goats they are goats i'm sorry oh okay i'm not it's gonna not, like it's this. not integral but it's books so it's goats <laughs> 
Oh, but Jenna, I'm actually scared of goats. All right, okay. Oh, well, fine. They are sheep then. Yeah, like right. when you said they were staring, it's like, oh, the goat's eyes. Mm. Fucking do not do that to me. Okay, right, fine. <laughs> These sheep are here, just standing around, chewing some of the moss from the roots of this tree. Um, But they also look like they're waiting quite ominously. Hmm. Wow, look at those ominous sheep. They are pretty ominous. Must be like the black sheep of the family, right? <laughs> um, do you reckon they know anything about this tree? Excuse me, uh, little goats? <laughs> sheep? <laughs> you wanted the sheep! <laughs> it's because they were introduced as that. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, little sheep? They just look at you and go, bah, bah. Oh, like, yeah, sorry, what I meant is um, Archie scratches her head a little bit, um, as if she's, uh, and she sort of like, goes, ah, ah, <laughs> as hmm. if she's trying to find the words, um, and she casts speak with animals, uh, because obviously Archie travelling in the Fae for so long has actually picked up a little bit mm -hmm. of of animal, she's, she's learned a bit of sheep. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, um... Do you know anything about what's going on with this tree? Oh, my name's Archie, by the way. Um, one of them turns to you and says, Turn us back right now, or else! Turn you back? Get them um, to turn us back now! Who's them? And all the rest of everyone can hear is just, meh, meh. Um, the, who's them? Um, he so, one of the sheep just sort of like rears his head up to the the tree itself. Them little shits. Wait, you're gonna have to tell the full story. He says, "Turn us back, and then we might." Well, turn. What did you used to be? I'm not telling you. Why? We you something nasty? Does it matter? We're not supposed to be sheep. That's true, but if you were something nasty... Then maybe it's better if you are sheep. He turned you into sheep. He's gonna sit down stubbornly and sort of stare at you. Um, and he's just gonna like sort of like sniff down so like a bit of snot comes out of his nose like as if he's, as if he's spitting you know like when you spit someone's name and uh he like rears his head up again to the tree and he goes in there and um yeah you you just look up at this tree and in the sort of little crevices you see little tiny holes uh inside it um if you mm, let's have a look here uh, what's everyone's passive perception? I know. Mm -hmm. uh, 16. Mm -hmm. 14. Uh, Flopsy, you feel your sort of body start to get a lot lighter. And you um, find yourself lifted up off the ground itself. Um, and you rise up about 10 feet into the air oh well this is strange um is anyone else rising or is it just me it's just you um hello every uh, guys uh, what what's happening you get floated over here to this little bit of uh, water as the waterfall cascades down you look down beneath your feet and 10 feet below you is the surface of rushing water oh no um no, oh, quick, Holland, uh, tie this rope into a lasso, and I pull up my 30 feet, uh, 50 feet of hemp and rope. As soon as you start to move, Archer, you trip backwards as your uh, shoelaces have been tied together. Ah! <laughs> my shoelaces. Oh. God, uh, wait, quick, Holland, you'll have to untie my shoelaces. I can't tie or untie knots. <laughs> <laughs> Neither can I. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, I could help with that, but I'm in a bit of trouble over here. Okay, Holland, you'll have to go get Flopsy, and you'll have to do it by yourself. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Flopsy. <laughs> it's just gonna like reach. As soon as you say Flopsy, what comes out of your mouth is literally just a dog bark. <laughs> <laughs> Skipper, this is no time to be barking. <laughs> you can just um, understand when we speak with animals. <laughs> Flopper Claws there is going, what, what's, what's, what's going on? Why are you acting strange? And then he burps massively and a massive balloon just like comes out like a rubber balloon comes out of his mouth. And he's like, Bleh! and inside the balloon, it's full of all the food that he's eaten as though it's a oh. sack of vomit. Oh. And it floats up into the air and just keeps going all the way up to the top of the tree. Pops against the branch and rains down on top of all of you, uh, except Flopsy, who's out of the way of the trajectory of it. Um, uh, how how far away am I from Archie? Uh, you are. Feet wise. Oh goodness, you are. Uh, you're about twenty five feet with the additional sort okay. of like. Okay. Uh, as I'm like hovering in the air, I'm gonna kind of like click my fingers towards uh, Archie's shoes. And Mage Hand is going to pop up mm -hmm. and start trying to untie the shoes for right. Archie. As soon as you do that, uh, you feel a sudden jolt as you are released from this like levitation. And you splash down uh, ten feet into this pool of water, uh, which you immediately, the weight of you just sucks you straight down underneath. Um, uh, momentarily, until you burst up and <gasps> take a breath, um, you've just been dunked in some water. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it like rapid water? Uh, no, it's a pool. Uh, so, the, oh. the, the, yeah, this runs into a pool, and then there's a stream that follows like down into the right. But that stream's not strong enough to take you. The rapids would be up there. Yeah, it's literally just <laughs> this. Just goes into this pool at the bottom. Um, but yeah, uh, Flopsy's gonna pull himself out of the water, kind of uh, shake himself off like a dog, mm -hmm. <laughs> and his fur just goes all like poofed. Hmm. Um, uh, Flopsy, now that you're here, do you think you could tie my shoelaces? Uh, I mean... yeah, sure, um, yeah. I can help with that. Um, it's, it's mighty cold in there, by the way, so, um, nobody else fly up into the air and jump into the water. That, that's my prescription for now. <laughs> I'll try not to. <laughs> I'll just tie your shoes while giving you that <laughs> warning. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, Holland, what were you saying before? I couldn't quite hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you could, like, mime it out? Uh, <laughs> it's going to point at the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> he turned into a dog. Wait, He's going to point to the ground. Then point in the air, then point at Flopsy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then interlock his fingers. <laughs> so I'm confused. Have you become a sheepdog or something? <laughs> a sheepdog. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I, I, I think maybe Colin's slowly transforming into a dog. I think we need to. think we need to. Do something. <laughs> we might not want to help those goats, but I think we might have to. Wait a minute, you're turning into a dog? Like, he's just going to start, like, like inspecting your entire body, like, sort of, like, your ears and your inside your mouth and everything. And he's like, well, I don't know, he's still got the rabbit teeth. They're <clears> not turning sharp like a, like a dog's. He's got a dog voice. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um... Suddenly, uh, off up above your heads, uh, especially Archie because of your pass passive, you see um, these uh, little pixies start flying out of the tree. Three of them, in fact, um, who fly down uh, towards you. Uh, fucking, uh, you know what? I want you to see the character art, so like, I'm just pretend they're small. Um, and they come flying down, and this one in particular comes over, uh, very gracefully hovers above you all, um, and he sort of, he has his little hand on his chin, and he's looking down at you all, like, with this smirk on his face, and he's like, hey, <laughs> how's it going? Oh, are these some of your pixie pranks? <laughs> well, That's what you, you want to call it. Oh, did we? 
he looks over at the two other the two girls um and he, he says uh hey zinnia <laughs> amaryllis <laughs> it worked <laughs> and um so amaryllis comes down and she's like oh hello aren't you cute and she's like floating above all of your heads um zinnia comes You're down pretty cute, so. <laughs> oh, well, thank you um he, did you like that? We can do more. <clears throat> oh, oh, look at you. And she's just going to like brush her hands over the length of your ear. And as she does so, like sort of sparkles come off her fingertips and you can speak normally now. Um, wasn't <laughs> oh, thank that you. fun? It was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was actually. <laughs> mm-hmm. I need to say that. Uh, this one looks a bit more serious, and she's like, um, You're not going to kill those goats, are you? I highly advise that you don't. Well, I mean, I don't think I can speak for ever. Well, I think I can speak for everyone when I say, I don't think we were going to kill the goats. <laughs> um, but, you know... Um, I can't even see the ghost, I can only see the sheep. Yeah, what are you talking about? We weren't going to kill anything. (laughs) Well, those sheep, or whatever they are, I highly advise that you don't kill them. You see, they are... And then this one goes, Hey, don't say anything. We've got it under control. And she's like, Kaluna... We've got it under control for like three days. And he's like, <laughs> It's okay. I can just get my powers back anytime. It doesn't matter. And this one's like, Yeah, anytime. <laughs> and she's just floating around. Uh, and <laughs> this one here, who's called Zinnia, she says, Um, well, it's not going to be good, is it, when they turn back in ten minutes? And he's like, yeah, ten minutes? Nah, I could sleep and get that back. Like, it doesn't even matter. And um, this one's like, I don't think you understand about time. Ten minutes could be an hour, or even just this second. And you're like, what the fuck are these guys talking about? They're, like, being really weird about the... Are like sort of what's going on like they they look like they're enjoying this but at the same time this one's like taking it really seriously um uh, so has anyone tried to come and kill your sheep before why are you scared of people attacking your innocent little sheep <laughs> this one steps forward and is like innocent <laughs> are you kidding me they're not sheep they're like evil little gnomes <laughs> Flopsy just looks at them. They look like sheep to me. Nah, that's because we made them into sheep. Did they have little red hats on? That's right. You must have seen them, right? Hmm. They came up over here, throwing rocks at our tree, where we're like, hey, hey, you better stop throwing those rocks at that tree. And they said, and other such nonsense. So we said, okay, <laughs> we, we, uh, you know, dusted our hands, a little bit of magic here and there, bam! Stopped them right in their tracks. And she's like, Well, it lasted a little bit longer than it did the first time we did it. And then, I don't know how long it's going to last now. And then this one's like, Mmm. She's just looking concerned, keeping her eye over there as she flies over. Well, if these are evil little gnomes, maybe, maybe we should, like, you know. Are you thinking of doing the thing that they told us specifically not to do? Well, I'm just posing it as a suggestion. I mean, I know it's not right, but these are bad people. I don't think you get it. He comes over to you and he's like, if you kill these sheep exactly as they are right now, they're just going to turn back into those gnomes. So, if you want some gnomes to fight, then sure, kill them, but 
Right now, they're just sheep. And they're not bothering us. They, they could bother you and many other people after they have stopped being sheep. Um... Us, we have some experience with the gnomes, so I, I, I don't think Archie is posing a very bad plan, really. He looks overly confident. He's like, huh, I could turn him in a sheep all day. <laughs> um, This one sort of like gives him this really confused look, and she's like, don't listen to him. He thinks he's the most powerful pixie in this entire tree, and it's just not true. And uh, he's like, what are you talking about? I've cast this spell on these guys like three times already. And this one's like, I actually cast the spell the second time. It was me. And he's like, there's about 25 of us living up there. We can all do it. And again, the sensible one, uh, Zinnia, uh, just says, we don't know how long it's going to last. It could be seconds, it could be hours, it could be days. If it's seconds every time, we've got 25 seconds. Kaluna. And Kaluna's just like, whatever. <laughs> he's just really cocker. Um, and he's like, I'd, I'd much rather have fun with these guys. Why don't you just, like, take their weapons away so when they turn back, they can't, like, actually do any damage? Like, why if you just left their, like, thing over there in the ground? <laughs> he goes pinker than he already is. Um, and he's like, well, I'm, you know, I, I, I can't really lift that, ha that heavy stuff, you know? Um, and they're all like, yeah, it's, um, I, I don't really want to touch it. <laughs> and she's, they're all just like, get a bit like bashful about the fact that they haven't removed this scythe. And, he, and he's like, and besides, when we turn the other three, they, the, you know, all their stuff just goes on to them. Like, it morphs into them. Archie would like to examine this scythe. Alright, go over to the scythe. As you do, this sheep's going to like sort of stand over it menacingly. Back off. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, Tell them to turn us back, for fuck's sake. Are you evil little gnomes made by Bavlorna? No, I mean by Scabbath the Nightshade. He just refuses to answer that. So that's a yes. Right, I'm going to investigate it to see if there's any anything up for that. Um, The sheep is going to try and bite your hand. <laughs> wow, um, what a dick. Yeah, he has uh, do, 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 a plus yeah, three. It's 16 SE. Alright, okay, he's got a plus three. Uh, 21. Wow. Okay. Uh, silvery barbs on that. <laughs> Thank you, Flops. Uh. Silvery barbs on a sheep bite. Um, Thank you, Flops. <laughs> uh, that's a 16. No, it meets the boots. Alright, so. and it's going to hit anyway, and it's only 1d4. Uh, sorry, <laughs> no, it, it's uh, no, no, it's actually not. The bite is just one point of crushing damage. <laughs> oh, it's like, ow! Ah, there'll be plenty more where that came from. <laughs> He's like trying to headbutt you. <laughs> mm. uh, you can just grab the scythe. He's, there's not much he can do by the way of stopping you from doing that because he doesn't have opposable thumbs. <laughs> Yeah, Archie's just got to grab the scythe and be like, well, it's mine now. Mm. As soon as you touch this scythe... like you... I knew something was going to happen. Yeah, you, you, you literally see that um, this sort of the memory of the scythe as it slashes through your body. And the you don't know how, but this sort of terrible deep fear just sinks right into your stomach as though it slashed you again. And you're going to take a bit of um, psychic damage. No. <coughs> as these are all very... Um, you immediately get the impression because these things are created in anger that um, when you have been slashed by one of these previously that to meet with one again would deal extra damage to you. Um, mm. So that's going to be a d6 of psychic damage. That's two. No! <laughs> oh god, that's three damage total. Yeah. 
you only got hit on one round with this, so you wouldn't have known that previously. Um, but yeah. for now, from now on, anyone who is slashed with a scythe from the red caps will receive an extra d6 of psychic damage. And it's a d extra d6 every single time. Yes. Oh god. But not per per round, not per because it can attack three times with it. It's not yeah, per no. hit; it's just per round. Yes. That's still uh, that's still gosh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, he, he, he knows that it's hurt you, does this sheep, and uh, he goes, Ah, take that! Yeah, see, I knew you weren't nice. Guys, the, the scythe is, like, painful. <laughs> uh, is it, is it sharp? Um, like, I don't, I picked it up, I, I just, I don't know, I, I just feel like, I, I just feel like I've been hurt. Like I got some sort of migraine going on. Maybe it's coated in something or something, um, maybe you shouldn't touch it again, um. Is there a place around here that we could put the scythe where no one can touch it and get hurt again? I'll ask the pixies. Um, this one's like, We could throw it in the water over here. I don't know. And he's like, What, throw it in there so that like you could slash up all the fish? Are you kidding me? God, what a stupid idea. And uh, she's like, Well, I don't know, do I? Um, this one's a bit more pragmatic, and she says, Well, we could hide it in the branches of the tree. Um, but again, we'd have to warn the rest of the pixies to not go anywhere near it. And, um, she's making this thoughtful face. And, but yes, I'm, I'm not sure. You could bury it. That's a good idea. Um, well... Are you good at digging holes? Because huh, we're not. Prefer to live above ground. Uh, Do you have a lot of shovel experience, Skipper? Clapper Claw lifts up both his claws, <laughs> and he's like, "Well, if you need anyone to to dig something with 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 a big black shovel like thing, I've got two shovel like things right here in my hand. Well, my, they are my hands." <laughs> 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 they sure are, buddy. Let's uh, dig uh, here, and he just points a random gra- like point of ground and just starts like digging. Well, well wait, it looks like you really are turning into a dog. <laughs> wait, wait, Holland. Yeah, we can't, we can't bury it right before their eyes. They'll know where it is. They can't dig it up. They're evil gnomes. N- no, I, d- I don't. What? <laughs> I don't I don't understand that logic. But no, I, I, I think they probably could. <laughs> we can see everything that's going on right in front of us. We're not stupid. They say they can see everything that's going on in front of them. They also say they're not stupid, but I highly doubt that. <laughs> He's gonna take another running like sort of like launch at you. Um, uh, let's see what else he could do. Um. He has uh, he has a hoof attack, uh, which is a plus three. Uh, Eighteen, oh. and that's the D four plus one bludgeoning. So uh, five <laughs> bludgeoning damage as he like tramples upon you, um, and he's like, "Ah, take that!" as he like punches you with both of his front hoofs. Ow! You're just kind of a, a dingus. Um, uh, fucking, what's his name? Um, uh, Kaluna comes over to you, and he's just like, um, uh, you know, you, you should kind of be a little bit more careful, because, like, these guys are probably gonna, you know, kill you if you 
Can't fly up to our tree. Mm. Uh, I don't know, guys. What do you think we should do? What she says, looking at Flopsy and Holland and on a lesser scale, hmm. uh, Clapper Claw. <laughs> <laughs> Clapperclaw's well, literally with his ass in the air, like digging like a dog with his <laughs> teeth. <laughs> I think we had the start of a good idea. Um, it it might be good if we could um, cover the sheep's eyes so they don't see where we're burying it. But um, Clapperclaw already seems to have decided where we're burying it. Right in front of their eyes. Hmm. Well, Maybe suppose... this is just like a decoy. Ah, yes. Maybe we could all go and dig several different holes, <laughs> let the sheep see the different holes, and then we blindfold them, and then we cover up all the holes, and they won't even have a clue where it is. <laughs> My god, not... you guys are really dumb. Why? What are you suggesting? Well, I told you what I'm going to suggest. I already said, I'll just stand here and cast a spell on them. It's easy. Forever? Yeah. And she's like on your side with this. It's like, yes, yeah, forever. That's not exactly, you know, realistic, is it? Um, she's just off in her own fucking world, flying around. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she's like the Luna Love God of the Three Pixies. Um, and he's like, well, yeah. What else are we supposed to do? And as this one is in off in her own world, you can see that she's like flying up to the tree and like every now and then touching the leaves of it and looking concerned. Is the tree okay? I, I kind of noticed that it looked kind of hurt. A little bit upset. Yeah. Well, it's not as green as it used to be. Let's just say that. Why? What happened? Well, I mean... I don't know. I just suddenly started getting sick. What are you asking me for? I'm not a tree doctor. He's just gonna start flying off like a bit annoyed. And um, well, do you know any tractors? <laughs> she's like, um, yes, I've been here a little bit longer than this one. He's a bit young. Um, yes, it. I'm. Sh are you from around here? Well, I'm from a, a bit further north, but yeah, mm. I'm from th thither. Right. Well, ever since, well, uh, I keep hearing things from passers-by, especially Aladrin, who are very concerned about what's going on. That there's apparently a hag um, sort of taking up residence here. And, well, since those rumours started, that this tree has been sick. Maybe it's worried sick. Perhaps. And it seems as though as long as she's around, then he's just going to get worse. Maybe she's, like, sucking up all of it energy or something. Perhaps. All I know is that, well, this isn't the first I've heard of it. Um... I, as I told you, there were a ladrin passing by, and they, um, they'd they been rustled up by a rather hostile dryad. Um, you the know. Dryad? Yes. A bunch of, um, of shrubs as well attacked them. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the creatures around here are being bothered by it. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, she looks over to Flopsy in Holland. Apparently her her tree was actually destroyed and uh, was sinking into the ground. Thankfully that's not happening to ours. But it doesn't see he seems to be a bit more brittle than he was in his younger years. Wait, whose tree sank into the ground? On the dryad, but that's I, I I don't know that first hand. It's just what I've heard on the on the on the you know on the vines. Uh, you can see Archie looks a little bit worried. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the more reason to 
deal with these eggs. <laughs> and he flies down and is like, Oh yeah? And how do you propose you're gonna do that? Kill her? It's a hag. Yeah? <laughs> and I'm a hollow. You're gonna kill a hag? What are you, like, 12? What? Well, I'm 15. Huh? <laughs> 15? <laughs> Don't let her hear you say that. Well, I wasn't I wasn't planning to, because she would be too busy dying. Hmm. Alright, whatever you say. What are you gonna do? Well, I can't I, I, I can't tell you. Clapperclaw like looks up and like sort of dusts some like fucking mud towards him and is like, Hey, you stop taking you stop picking on my friend, because my friend's strong, and I tell you now, he can hit something's head right clean off. No. And uh He's like, oh, right, okay, what, with that stick? Huh, <laughs> okay. Uh, can you do any magic? Yeah. I'll go on then, prove it. Hmm. Uh, okay, um... He's just gonna... Uh, look at the... <laughs> the, the sheep things, and just... Raise his hand and <laughs> cast fog cloud, <laughs> <laughs> and then we f we fixed our blindfold problem too at the same time. Hey. There, uh, now we can uh, bury the thing. What's the radius? And also, that? I've done magic. That's a good question. Uh, twenty feet. I think. <coughs> right, okay. Uh, twenty foot fog cloud. Yes. 20 foot radius as well. Nice, that's a big, big fog cloud. Know. I'll make it, yeah. Um, <laughs> as this fog cloud uh, appears, um, uh, um, Zinnia just sort of like moves out of the way like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, um, okay. Uh, she's just looking over at like you two as if this is just caused by him, like posturing, you know what I mean? And she's just like, mm -hmm, irrelevant sort of thing. Um, Archie, you are in it a little bit so you can sort of move out if you want. And, um, as long as you keep hold of the scythe, by the way, it's not going to continually hurt you, but if you put it, put it down and pick it up again, it will. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, and he's like, oh, a fog cloud? Oh, that's nothing. Well, what's that supposed to do? Well, what are you going to do? Uh, you know, fog them to death? Well, I wasn't going to do any hurtful spells. Well, I didn't ask you to hurt the, the sheep, you know? If you hurt the sheep, then... <laughs> yeah. You got a bunch of those gnomes on your hands. Maybe... Maybe... Hmm. Here's a thought. But maybe I could convince them to be good. Are you kidding me? You... Well, it just so happens that... I mean, I once met a little gnome. And he yeah. taught me a song. It's called the Happy Gnome Song. Yeah. Maybe if I sing it to them, they'll turn good. Ha <laughs> ha! Are you- oh, you're for real, aren't you? Oh wow! You're actually for real! Ha! <laughs> I- I don't think I've ever heard anything so dumb in my life. And this well, one flies down and she's like, Now don't be so nasty. He, they're just trying to help. And come up with solutions on, like, someone. I came up with a solution. What the fuck is your problem? He's getting really mad. Like he's actually getting angry that he feels like he's the one that's correct. Um, While he starts arguing, I'm just gonna like sincerely look at Archie and just be like, "I think that sounds like a fantastic idea. I I'd really like to see that." Are you sure? No, he'd really like to see. That. Okay, sure. He's just gonna sit with his legs crossed on this branch and just like look down patronizingly at you. Well, okay. Archie approaches the sheep. <clears throat> this is called the Happy Little Gnome Song. Uh, and it's got a bit of uh, audience participation as well. So, in the morning when I wake up and I stumble out of bed, mm. I put my pointy hat on my little pointy head. It doesn't much matter if the sun is rain or shine, because a gnome is a happy fellow almost all the time. All the gnomes on the right say, pointy little hat. <laughs> and all the gnomes on the left say, two foot tall. <laughs> um, roll a persuasion check with a disadvantage. 
to convince him to be good. <laughs> oh god, a persuasion, Jeremy. Uh, oh, 24. Um, they, like, through the fog, <laughs> like, these sort of emerge. Like, I know that the point of fog, you, we, know where, we all know where the point of fog is. They all come up to you and stare at you. Um, and, uh, let's just have a look here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh. All right, they eat, they're all just gonna stare at you for a minute, and you can see that like one of their knees is sort of like bending up and down. Um, like they they kind of like the song, but it's <laughs> you don't know what it's done to them. You just know that they're bopping along slowly. Um, through the she's gonna just keep singing it. Through the fog. <laughs> she's gonna keep singing it and like go through all the norms on the right until they actually start sing saying point a little hat and two foot tall. <laughs> in the uh, in the speak with animals that you've still got active, they're just gonna be like pointy little hat, <laughs> two foot tall, <laughs> and. Uh, the, all these three are just sort of looking over at you with this face of confusion. And she goes, I think murderous things can like song as well, can't they? And uh, <laughs> fucking um, Cal Kaluna is just like, you know what? She's just dumb. Like, why is anyone even listening to her? Like, what? And uh, fucking Zinnia is just like, um, you're being very rude and you know, we're just trying things, and that's it. And um, and when they're bouncing the little knees, you can sort of see that like the little knees are starting to get less hair on them, where their little hooves are starting to look more foot-like. Oh god! And see the work we didn't. <laughs> and they begin to slip out of the polymorph and into the red caps that you have fought before staring right at you with their terrible horrible faces right these fucking bastards boosh 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 <laughs> and finally boosh beep boop one of them doesn't this one here doesn't have its scythe because you've got it um you put it down on the ground, though, didn't you? Because you didn't... No, no, it. I was holding it. Oh, you was holding time. it the entire time. Right, okay. Um, yeah, they were, they were standing like this around you. Um, and as they emerge, they look down, their eyes glow red, and that's where we're going to leave tonight's session. Oh, God. Ooh, 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 ooh. Beep. All right. Thank you very much for listening, um, everyone. Thank you, Nat Wannabes. Oh, um, yes, thank you, Nat Wannabes. Um, reluctantly. Uh, I don't know. That's just sticking now in it, I suppose. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Um, that's tonight's Witchlight. Catch you next week, next Monday. Hopefully, Please forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully it's 7 GMT this time. <laughs> Uh, we won't run into any more technical issues. All right. Uh, bye, everybody. Right. Goodbye. Goodbye.